The wind was blowing, and the sun was setting. The sunset, as always, was beautiful. This is especially noticeable if you live in a village on the outskirts and work in the fields. So the farmers who were now working on the golden field witnessed this miracle. Although for them it was already commonplace, because no matter how wonderful the event was, if it enters the routine of the day, then it becomes routine and surprises no one. One of the farmers, who worked hard, was now looking for his son. The man had tousled brown hair, expressionless brown eyes and a muscular build. He was wearing farmer's clothes and right now, looking around, he was looking for his son. Soon the son responded to the call. He was a comely looking boy with golden hair and white peasant clothes. He was working on tying up the harvest they had gathered today. The guy, unlike his father, had very expressive eyes and he looked at his father with them and asked what happened. The father, finding his son, wiped the sweat from his forehead and said that they had coped with today's work and now they should go home. The guy nodded and started packing. On the way home, they met a neighbor, a kind aunt with gray hair, who, after greeting Father Bond and son Sean, asked them if they were going home, and then, looking warmly at Sean, said that he was so small, but was already helping his father on the field. The guy, smiling, greeted his aunt, and modestly said that it was his duty to work in the field, and then after asking around, he went on with his father. The guy's name was really Sean, but as happens in all Popattens, he did not belong to this world at all. In fact, he was a programmer in the 21st century. During one of their studies, an error occurred that caused the devices to explode, and he could not survive there. The guy woke up already in the body of this boy named Sean. If you look at the situation, Sean thought he was in Europe in the Middle Ages. The owner of the estate manages the nearby villages, and their residents pay tax in exchange for housing. Returning to his house, the guy was thinking about his own. Their village was completely ordinary with simple medieval houses. The guy didn't know much about this world, but gradually he discovered something new. While he was thinking about his own while walking home with his father, his father suddenly froze and looked at the sky. Fascinated by this guy also raised his head and in the sky he saw something like a flying saucer. This flying saucer was on fire and spinning over their heads, which is why Sean's father immediately grabbed him and bent down with him to the ground. After the saucer flew over them, they looked up and saw a huge explosion in the direction of the forest. Of course, the villagers began to panic. One of the old men asked what had just flown over them, and the other told him that he didn't know what it was, but he knew it was something big. Sean's father was also shocked and wondered what the hell it was, but Sean himself was in anticipation of future events. After that incident, he and his father returned home and the sun set. The guy and his father also sat down, but only at the table and the father began to serve his son and himself food, saying for one thing that the owner was not there now, and the owner's wife announced an order that no living soul should approach that mountain until her husband returned. The owner manages their settlements, and therefore it is necessary to follow his orders, otherwise there will be serious problems. Speaking, this man handed food to his son on a wooden cup and asked him if he understood what his father was saying and he nodded looking at the food. The man smiled and nodded with an almost empty look, and then sadly remembering the past, said that our mother left this world too soon, although he understood that the guy had suffered a lot with him, but he wanted him to be happy, so he decided to give the guy a day off and told him not to go to the field tomorrow. While eating the food, the guy nodded to his father. It was late at night and seeing that his father had fallen asleep, the guy went out into the yard and took their white horse from the stable and thought that he would borrow his father's treasure while he was sleeping. It is unlikely that he will find out about it. A white horse with golden hair and a tail was the only thing in their house that cost money. It was a former military horse and its speed and bearing is simply incredible. By this year, thanks to his father's perseverance and support, he had learned to ride, and after all, people with such a skill in their village could be counted on the fingers. Striving on horseback, the guy couldn't wait to see what had fallen, unless he was wrong. It was a flying saucer, who knows, maybe it's connected with his appearance here. And after some time of racing, he reached a huge crater which was formed due to the fall of a flying saucer. The plate itself was in a deplorable state. Some parts were even decomposed, but it still did not lose its shape. Looking at him, the guy thought that he was right after all. If he had stayed and waited for the owner, he would not have found any clues. Descending from the horse, he ran in the direction of the flying saucer where a hole was visible and he ducked into it and began to scour the ground and soon found a black box. Swiping from the box, drinking, the guy mentally noticed that this box is very strong, since it survived even in that explosion. There's definitely something valuable in it. Taking the box with him, he decided to open it tomorrow. He quickly got out of the plate and mounted his horse and rode home. 
The very next morning he decided to see what was hidden in this box. He was hoping for a treasure, because it wasn't for nothing that the plate looked so impressive. Opening it, he saw a very familiar thing. Yes, there was even written in the corner of this panel that it was made in China. It was a solar panel. Looking at him in shock, the guy in high spirits exclaimed that this is the technology of the future. There was also a tool similar to VR glasses in the box. The guy began to examine it and also found an inscription on it that it was made in China. It looks like whoever made them, they treasured them, because they made such a strong box to keep these glasses. He put it on, deciding to try what she was capable of. When he turned it on, reality began to change with augmented reality, and his room began to be erased and instead he fell into some strange blue room and cells. While he was looking around in surprise, a voice greeted him and said that he was in a multifunctional training system. Raising his head, the guy saw a girl floating in the sky with a witch's purple cap. The girl was devilishly beautiful. She had purple hair going down her back. The guy, having examined her, began to look around, and he saw only a pedestal in the center of the room. The guy didn't know what kind of training system it was, but it looks like the glasses were connected to this place, but now they are not on it. Tactile, he felt everything very strange, not like in reality. Is it really true? The embarrassed guy pinched his cheek. Virtual space, and it looks like it was a virtual person. Examining the gray pedestal, he excitedly said that in the 21st century there really were such technologies, but they could not reach such a level. It looks like these glasses came from a more advanced place. At that moment, the witch who was standing in the sky appeared right in front of him and said that he was in the main hall of the multifunctional training system, and she was an AI named Alice. Then she asked him what he wanted to know today. Scratching the back of his head, the guy told her that she was saying that this was a training system, and then scratching his cheek, he asked if it was about the training system that he knew. He meant the system of education in schools, universities and some of the bloggers who made them up. The witch closed her eyes and swirling ribbons appeared around her, gathered in two circles similar to the arbitrators. They consisted of small rectangular screens in each of which there were different images. The girl said that she could give him access to any skills, there is everything he wants to learn. She brought up a screen with a dummy divided into parts and added that she could also provide props and a place for exercises. He would get unlimited access to any techniques, and after that he would be able to master them, so he could pump his brain and physical abilities. The tape began to spin more slowly and words began to appear on the screens, meaning whatever field of knowledge. For example, hand-to-hand -hand combat, mathematics, chemistry, cooking and much, much more. The girl, after showing it, said that it was a skill tree, he could choose any techniques to study. Surprised by this discovery, the guy was delighted, because in a world where human knowledge was so scarce, he received a training system. It's out, he now has an external system. While the AI was loading something, glowing golden, the guy asked her if there were any side effects of all this. Rewinding the tape, the guy said that chemistry, mathematics and so on simply would not be useful here, and then finding agriculture, he clicked on it, and thought about why he had to study even after death. If this is mandatory, then he decided to choose something that can provide him with a comfortable life. When he chose the basics of agriculture, Alice told him that the basics of agriculture is a third, level course. She also advised him to take basic courses first. Surprised by this trap, the guy asked with shock that there were some special conditions here. And then scratching his cheek, he said that he didn't have that much time. Then after thinking for a while, he asked if he could start this course right away. The witch nodded, and said that he could, but first, she would have to check the level of knowledge of the guy. The guy excitedly said that it was no problem. He was confident, he had taught the base. Alice nodded and said that she would do as the guy wished. While Alice was preparing something like an exam, the guy thought that it was right in the books. He would choose something within his capabilities. He chose the basics of agriculture and a window popped up in front of him, asking him to apologize, and saying that the textbook he had chosen was lost. The guy, looking at this window with a dumb look, and thought to himself that he knew it. Everything does not happen so simply. Then, he asked Alice what lost means and she replied, saying that maybe it was because of a recent accident. There was a problem in the database. Then she added that he had chosen something else. Sighing, the guy decided to choose the basics of mathematics, but the same notification about lost data appeared again and when he asked for the basics of chemistry, the answer did not change. Even the basics of hand-to-hand -hand combat were lost. Clutching his head, he screamed, asking what he should choose then. 
Alice asked him to wait, saying that the system was loading. Then she informed him that the adjustment was completed, and then she stretched out several ribbons with materials spinning in the shape of a ball in his direction, and said that these were the surviving materials. The guy saw in the strip fundamentals of Chinese chess and fundamentals of radio gymnastics and categorically shouted that he would not study such useless courses. But ten hours later he put a checker on the board and excitedly exclaimed that it was a check. Alice clapped her hands and congratulated the guy on passing the basics of the Chinese chess course, and then asked if he wanted to continue studying and move to the intermediate level. The guy nodded smiling and said that he really liked it and therefore he agreed. And then the realization came to his head. He looked at Alice and realized that something was wrong here. The guy asked Alice for the time and the girl brought out the clock, which was now already 10.52. Alice asked him what had happened, and the guy, surprised by this discovery, incomprehensibly asked if he had been here for 10 hours. It's probably already dawn outside, he needs to go to work. And then he crashed into an invisible wall and asked without understanding where the door was. He started saying words like exit and when he came out that nothing was working. He asked Alice how to get out of here. The girl smiled and told him not to worry, because there is a passive learning function here. He can not worry about the passage of time outside. The guy turned around and asked Alice to explain, and she began to explain. The so-called passive learning method is the process of changing the ratio of the flow of time using virtual space, as a result of which time slows down. In theory, this function can twist the time ratio to infinity. The guy showed two windows, in one the guy is sleeping in bed, and in the other he is now communicating with her and said that the flow of time in this space is much faster than in the outside world. He's been here for over 10 hours, but it's not dawn outside yet. The guy who heard this excitedly asked if he could adjust it himself, and Alice said that theoretically he could adjust the ratio to infinity. Clenching his fist, the guy said that going out, he would be able to stay here for a long time and learn different skills. And then, with a twinkle in his eyes, he told Alice to adjust the ratio to 110, and they would play another game of chess. Leaning over to him, the witch asked if he was sure to make a ratio of 110. And then she explained that the change in the ratio is due to his body and mind. If he overdoes it, it will cause irreparable harm to his body. There will also be an explosion of brain vessels, confusion, paralysis, spinal cord damage, blood clots in blood vessels. After hearing all this, the guy turned pale to a state of paralysis and shouted that she would never do a ratio of 110. Then he asked her to choose a ratio suitable to the state of his body. The witch approached in a tight pulled his cheek because of what? The guy was embarrassed and retreated. But the girl, with shining eyes and ready hands, reached out to him. The frightened guy fell on the back point and asked her what she was doing, and the girl said that she was scanning him. The confused guy asked about how she could call it a scan. After a while, the girl said that, judging by the results, the guy's body is in perfect order and therefore he will be able to withstand a change in the ratio to 1 to 2. Sighing, the guy said she would set it up to 1 to 2 and he would go to bed. He still has to work during the day, so he needs to gain strength. Alice, smiling, told him not to worry about it either, as soon as he connects to the system. His real body automatically plunges into a state of deep sleep, and in three hours it is completely restored. Then she informed him that the adjustment of the time ratio was completed and recommended that he start studying the initial course of radio gymnastics. This will help him improve his physical characteristics and contribute to the intensive development of the brain. Awkwardly, he imagined himself doing radio gymnastics and said he was too embarrassed if he could not study it. The girl smiled and asked him if he was sure, and then told him that when he learned the first lesson, he would be able to adjust the ratio to 1 to 3, if not more. Hearing this, the guy immediately excitedly said that he would learn it, he would learn everything. The witch immediately reincarnated in the costume of a strict teacher and said that she was glad of his enthusiasm, so they started the task. The girl now had a white blouse and a strict black skirt with black stockings. Her wavy hair hung down her back, and her crimson eyes complimented her look. The guy, seeing her like this, asked her to stop. Why did she change clothes at all? When they started, and the guy began to exercise, the girl began to slap him with a stick in places that he held incorrectly or did something wrong. With scarlet cheeks from excitement, the girl said that they should start studying the first section the initial course of radio gymnastics. Then she giggled perversely and started counting. When the guy was wrong, she pointed out the mistake and was his, for one telling how to fix the mistake. The guy screamed every second that he was in pain and when dawn came, the guy took off his glasses and shouted that he had done so much in the evening. Now his whole body ached. What kind of gymnastics it was in general, it was definitely not invented by people. 
holding his back. He said that it was not at all like the gymnastics they were taught in schools. It was more like advanced yoga. If it develops the inner potential of a person, then she should be able to restore the body after hard work. Then he decided to check it out and lifted the chair, but realized that it was too light and tried to lift it with one hand and he succeeded. Then he decided to adopt flexible poses, and surprisingly, all the yoga poses that he remembered were given to him quite easily. Delighted, he exclaimed that it was a miracle. The ache in his body really passed. Then the weight and sweat fell on the bed, saying that maybe his blood pressure jumped a little and fell asleep. At this time, Sean's father came to his room and wanted to open it, but realized that the door was closed. Grinning, he said that it looked like his son had grown up. He even started to lock himself in the room, knocking on the door of the room. He told his son to get up because it was time to go to work. Hardly opening his eyes, the guy heard someone calling him. When he opened his eyes, saw his father and turned on the bed, looked at him. The father, seeing his condition, asked how he was and Sean said that he was very tired and wanted to sleep more. By the way, the bed was made with pink linens. Sean's father touched his forehead and smelled that there was no heat, said that it was good and added that he would gain strength and he would go to the field. The man went out, and the guy stood up, clutching his aching head, thinking about what had happened. He could feel his body's energy restored, but why did he suddenly fall asleep? His head was still spinning, and stars were spinning in front of his eyes. After thinking for a while, he looked at the box and thought that it looked like he would have to go there again and ask Alice when he came in. Alice also appeared, dressed as a witch sitting on a broom and greeted him. Then she said that she could see that he was training hard outside. And the surprised guy asked how she knew and therefore, the girl said that a large amount of information had been lost, so she was collecting data from the outside world. Then the guy realized what he had said and was confused and grabbed his heart, asking that she could see everything he was doing. Alice, grinning, shook her finger and said that she was collecting only useful information. She was not interested in what the child was doing. The guy, squinting, asked why he hears a note of arrogance in this. The girl began to descend, and after a while she found herself next to him and began to touch him, then by the cheeks, then by the hands, then by the shoulders, saying that based on her data, she can claim that the characteristics of his body are unique to this world. That is, he can become a cultivator. Painstaking practice is the process of using difficult conditions to stimulate the development of the body. This contributes to continuous progress towards achieving the goal. Looking at his hands, the guy excitedly said that, that is, she means that he has potential. The girl nodded with a smile and said that he was very well suited for the role of a persistent cultivator. Then the guy asked, since his body became stronger, why then he fell into a dream? The girl called a mannequin of a man and immediately put on a teacher's costume and pointing to the nose, said that the energy that the guy spends while in this space is easily restored in a dream. But the restoration of energy consumed in the outside world requires a longer period. Slamming the pointer on the mannequin's head, the girl continued, saying that physical strength and intelligence are closely linked. If the energy consumption exceeds the permissible norms, he will plunge into the solution of self-preservation. In other words, he will simply fall into a state of sleep. Stroking his chin with nervousness, the guy said that he realized that in space you can exhaust yourself as much as you want. And if he gets tired, in the outside world, you will have to rest. What the hell was that? Because of his words, the girl hit him on the head with a pointer and said that he had forgotten about the passive learning method. By training his body here, outside he will be able to become much stronger than ordinary people. Scratching his head, the guy said that he thought this method was useful from the outside, and the girl, after analyzing the characteristics of the guy's body, said that of course it was useful. His body's physical abilities are already better than most adults. The guy, hearing this, got excited and said that since everything was like that, then they should not waste time and continue training. Of course, after a while he regretted what he had said. Seeing him like this, the girl hit him with a whip and said that he was a weakling. By the way, the witch turned into a teacher again. Looking at him with a cold face, she said that they had started the second part. The expenditure of physical and mental strength had increased so he was still not up to the minimum requirements in his current state. But then leaning forward, the girl smiled and told him that if he tightened the first part a little more, he would quickly catch up with the material. Then the girl changed her outfit again, now for a fitness trainer. Her silky hair was tied with an elastic band so that it wouldn't get in the way, and she was wearing gym clothes. The girl, while training, said that they had six more hours and whether he was ready. Seeing how the girl changed her image, the guy shouted that she was changing images too quickly. Then the girl started teaching the guy. 
The guy took one of the yoga poses where he needs to put a bridge while lifting one leg up and then the girl, seeing this, told him to put his hand here and also watch the angle of the leg lift. Then she pulled herself up and supported the guy's back, which is why her breasts appeared right in front of the guy's face, and that weight blushed and said that he could not breathe. The girl said that he was a cultivator and it was useful for him to have a craving for overcoming obstacles. Then, when he changed his pose to an ascending swan, where he had to stand in the plank, only leaning on one leg and arm, and pulling the other leg back, the girl began to correct his shortcomings by leaning on his back. Trembling all over, the guy felt the full weight of female charms on his head and realizing that he could no longer push the girl away, shouting that he already knew everything and learned. And then coming out of this space, he shouted that next, no matter how he would train himself. The girl told him to wait, but he wouldn't listen. Taking off his glasses, the guy wiped the sweat from his forehead, taking a deep breath and saying that it was dangerous. He raised his hand and squeezed it, thinking that he felt that his physical and spiritual strength had recovered. The passive learning method was really a good thing. Then he went to the bucket, and hitting his fist on his palm, said that it was time for him to check the results of his training and practice. The guy began to fill a tank made of boards, and after a while, when the water was almost full, the guy looked in the direction of the speech and thought about filling a full barrel. He needed to bring seven and a half buckets. Previously, he had little strength, and he carried half a bucket and ran back and forth almost twice as much but now he is gaining full buckets. Moreover, he began to carry water faster, and the work began to go much more efficiently. Clenching his fists and looking at them, the guy said that it was worth saying, thank you to radio gymnastics. At that time, he saw his father carrying a press of firewood, running in his direction. He said he could help and without letting his father say anything, he took his load and ran back. The father looked with shock and wanted to stop him from such a heavy load, but the guy didn't even listen to him. So day after day he trained. Outside, he dragged water and helped his father, and in virtual reality he did gymnastics under the control of Alice. Every day he slightly increased the load, which made him become both faster and stronger. Seeing such a growth, his father let down a stingy man's tear, turning to his darling, asking her if she could see from heaven how their child had grown up. And then one night, when the guy was practicing in virtual reality again, he asked Alice if the time was still up. Now he was standing in a pose that suggested he was standing on one hand face down with his legs and one arm stretched wide in opposite directions. Alice said that there was one minute left, and the guy, sweating all over, said that this was the longest minute of his life, and the girl, clapping, said that time was up and the guy immediately fell to the ground. Steam even came out of it and sighing with difficulty, the boy turned his back to the floor and faced the ceiling and closed his eyes. The girl, having deduced the characteristics of the guy's body, said that he had done a wonderful job. He was able to master the movement from the second lesson in 40 days. Smiling, the girl said that the guy is very diligent and this is commendable. Standing up, the guy sighed and not with distrust looked at the witch and asked why it seemed to him that she did not praise him very sincerely. The girl, grinning, called him a joker and added that her first rule is parody and she really praised him. The guy asked if he could set up passive learning, since he had already finished the second lesson. The witch said that, of course, she could and asked him to wait a minute, and then a voice sounded in the guy's head, saying that the time ratio was being adjusted and the ratio was now 1 to 4. The guy opened his arms and looked up, closed his eyes, feeling awe, the girl looked at him with a mute look, and asked him if he wanted to take off. The guy, without answering, looked at the girl, and asked if they hadn't set up passive learning, and he didn't feel any changes. The girl sighed with despair, and said that the guy's body had gone through a lot of training. This is enough to withstand the entire negative effect of changing the time ratio. But then the girl, smiling insidiously, said that if he wants to feel something, then she can arrange it. Clutching his heart, the boy with tear-stained eyes shouted that he did not need to arrange anything like this. The girl, covering her grinning mouth with her hand, said that recently he had shown good results, so she advised him to master a new skill. The guy, tilting his head, asked what skill she was talking about, and she immediately put forward to him the basics of harvesting firewood. The guy, looking at the proposed skill, asked that the girl had been secretly updated, because it didn't seem to be. Alice said that during this time she managed to collect information and create a primary database. The guy nodded and accepted the training, after which an axe began to appear on his hand. The girl raised her hand and said that after a series of initial calculations and analysis of his abilities, she had created a skill suitable for him. And then she offered to take him an axe. Grabbing an axe, the guy said that it turns out there is equipment for training. And then looking at the axe, 
he said that it looks like this axe is different from the usual one. He liked the game item, and he immediately materialized in this digital world. The guy looked at the witch with pity, and said that why should he do this? He's been through so much to chop wood or something. Why can't he fight right and left? Alice, without listening to him, called the firewood and said that the setup of the props was completed, and then said that he could start. The scent of firewood began to glow with a red line and the boy grabbed the axe and prepared to strike. The guy, all out of breath and sweating, asked the witch, who was now in the form of a coach, if she was okay, because the girl was also sweating all over. Alice told him to push a little more, but not to worry about her, because she's fine. The guy should continue training in extreme heat, they are even more useful. The guy, wiping his sweaty forehead with his hand, hardly said that he could no longer, but still swung the axe again and cut the log exactly in half. The girl, seeing this, said that with this, the guy had exactly 765 logs. Falling to the ground, the boy, breathing deeply, shouted that he had been chopping these firewood for 12 hours. 12 hours and no respite. Previously, he didn't get so tired even if he ran 10 kilometers. The girl smiled and said that he demonstrates extraordinary endurance. She barely manages to keep up with him. Now you can also check if the energy in the guy's body has increased. Sean, clenching his fist, said that he felt like he was overflowing with strength. He felt such lightness in his body. The girl, crossing her arms, told him that in reality he was in a state of sleep, and the tissues themselves were recovering, and therefore he could not worry about muscle pain. Morning came and Sean took off his glasses and got out of bed. A fly flew in front of him and he immediately noticed it and slapped it sharply. Surprised by his reaction, he looked at the hand and said that not only the strength, but also the reaction increased. Getting up, he left the house and saw that his father was chopping logs there. Noticing his son, he stopped and turned around and told him that he got up early today. But it's not so important. If he's hungry, then breakfast is waiting on the table. The guy, looking down at the split log, said that he wanted to go to the field today. His father, nodding, told him to rest a little then, and he began to fold wormwood. Taking the axe, he brought it to the log and told his father that if he was not mistaken, then he remembered that the knight's estate was constantly buying firewood. That's why he wanted to get some money for sale, and at the same time the guy will stretch out. The old man turned to him and told him that chopping wood requires strength, and Sean is still too young for this. The guy, not listening to his father, raised the axe and cut the log exactly in half, as well as virtual reality. With each new blow, new firewood appeared, and looking at all this, his father froze in shock. The guy, wiping the sweat from his forehead, smiled and said that he had already grown strong. Then the old man remembered how Sean helped him every day and finally accepted that his son seemed to have really grown up. After a while, a beautiful girl came to the gate of their house and asked him why he was chopping wood, and what about his father. The guy, smiling, told Aunt Joey that he would take it to the estate for sale, and his dad went to work in the field. The girl went behind the gate and walked up to him, put her basket down and said that she had cooked a lot today, and offered him to eat with his father together when he returned. The guy needs it especially, because he is still growing. Looking at a beautiful woman with chestnut-colored hair, slightly thick eyebrows and kind brown eyes, too, the guy thought that she definitely liked his father, every time she uses this excuse to see him. But it looks like Shona's old man is avoiding her on purpose, it looks like he can't forget Shona's mom. The girl began to put bread, rolls and cookies in a plate and getting up from her seat. The girl, smiling, asked the guy to tell her father that she would go to the estate tomorrow and whether his father could lend her his horse. Eating a cookie, the guy was surprised to ask if the girl had not gone there recently. The girl, bending down and smiling, said that her older brother had returned and wanted to find a student. There were three young guys in the village, and they wanted to go there with her tomorrow. The guy is surprised, asked her that she was telling the truth, and Uncle Willen really came back. He also qualified as a blacksmith. The girl nodded and said that he had opened his forge in the manor. The guy seriously furrowed his eyebrows and thought that Uncle Willen is a blacksmith of the highest rank. In addition to the master who received the title of knight, this is the second rank of the highest rank. If he can become his disciple, wouldn't it be a lottery win? All beaming, he immediately turned to the girl, saying that he also wants to become a disciple of Uncle Willen. At that moment, the guy's father returned and, hearing his son's words, threw his load, said that it was nonsense. The blacksmith villain has qualified for the highest level. He is second only to the owner of the estate in status. His students are also not from commoners. Where is Sean going to? The girl, having fenced off Sean, told Bond not to be so strict with Sean. And the guy clenched his fist, said that he had the strength, and he was also sure that he could become Uncle Willen's disciple. Then he proudly said that he had become very hardy 
Hadn't Bond noticed it himself in so many days? Bond looked at the mountain of split wormwood and said doubtfully that it looked like it, but he still doubted. Then the girl, approaching him with a smile, said that Sean is a very good child. Let Bond let him go, let him at least try. If it doesn't work out, then nothing. Sighing, Bond clutched his forehead and realizing that he could not convince his son, decided to let him try his luck, and therefore agreed to his request. The delighted guy, in a fit of happiness, raised his hands up, thanked his father and said that he would not disappoint him. The moon rose in the sky, and the guy was chopping wood in his artificial space. Then he turned to Alice saying that he would soon go to the blacksmith, and that he wanted to become his disciple, when he can start learning the perfect technique of harvesting firewood. Alice, shaking her finger, said that he was like an honest, kind and wise learning machine, stating that the guy was not yet ready to learn this skill perfectly. Looking at her doubtfully, he said that it was just chopping wood, where to improve here. The girl took an axe from his hand, and also took wormwood in her other hand. She went forward, telling the guy that now she would demonstrate this technique to him in perfect form. Then throwing the wormwood into the air, she screamed for the guy to look carefully and with a swing of the axe, cut the wormwood, and he landed chopped into several parts. Seeing such an incredible sight, the guy, not believing, asked if a person was capable of such a thing at all, and then remembering that Alice was not a person, he said that then everything was clear to him. The girl, handing the axe back to the guy, said that his desire to become a blacksmith's apprentice was very reasonable, so he could improve the abilities of his body, and it could allow him to master the skills of harvesting firewood perfectly. The guy regretfully took the axe and said that he also thought so, but he was afraid that the blacksmith Willen would not want to work with him. The girl, frowning, told him that he had been training so hard all this time, he should be more confident, and the blacksmith would accept him. The guy looked at his axe and mentally said that he must stand firmly on his feet in this world and this test will be his first step on the way to becoming the strongest. The next morning, the guy was standing with a horse and his father was standing in front of him. They were waiting for yesterday's girl and soon she appeared along with two more horses and three guys. The girl, seeing the guy from afar, raised her hand to greet him. She looked very pleased, judging by the smile on her face. Approaching the guy and bending down, she asked Sean if he was ready to go to the manor, and the guy, who was looking forward to it, nodded. Then the girl looked at the guy's father and noticed that he was very tense. It seems he was very worried about his son. The girl smiled at such care and told him to relax, and promised that if Willen did not accept Sean, she would bring him home safely. Bond sighed with relief, but of course his tension did not quickly disappear, he just relaxed a little and thanked Joey for it. The guy decided that it was the right time for their rapprochement and raising his hand, he said that he needed to tell his father something. Bond crouched down to be on the same level with the guy and Sean ran to him and bent down to his ear, cheerfully said that when he left, he should take good care of Aunt Joey. Hearing this embarrassing words from his son, Bond, blushing, slapped the guy on the top of the head, saying that he was not talking nonsense. Sean ran towards Joey and said goodbye to his father, asking him to take care of himself. Bond looked at him with a warm smile and raised his hand and also said goodbye to him. After a while, they reached a bustling city. The guy was sitting with Aunt Joey on a burgundy horse. Sean, with shining eyes, began to look around, seeing the crowd of people and admiringly said that, unlike their village, the city is much more lively. After a while, they finally reached Willen's Forge and after descending, Joey began to gently grab the guy so that he would not fall when descending from the horse. After that, he informed his brother that they had arrived. At this time, the blacksmith Willen was tapping on the anvil. The blacksmith, Valen, was a muscular man with a tuft of red hair on top of his head and a thick mustache of the same color. Having finished the job, the blacksmith with the Herculean body went outside and looked at the applicants with a searching look. The other three candidates cringed in fright at the sight of such a formidable man. But Joey only smiled, but Sean was slightly tense, but did not panic like those three. No, rather the guy was excited. Willen, seeing his sister, pulled himself up to her, opening his arms wide, saying that he missed her dear sister. She's finally here. Joey, embarrassed by her brother's behavior, pushed him away, well, at least she wanted to. But because Willen was a mountain of muscle, she only managed to prevent him from hugging her in front of the children. When he came to himself, Willen coughed dryly, removed his hands, and taking a proud pose, told his sister to stay here longer, she was probably tired. The girl shook her head negatively and said that she had a lot of things to do in the village, and then pushing four guys forward, smiling, said that she had brought young and strong people to him, as he asked, who knows, maybe someone will like him. Then Willen started looking at the candidates one by one. 
The first was a gloomy boy with black hair and a frown. After examining him and seeing that he was neither energetic nor muscular, he said that the candidate was so-so. Then he moved on to the second one, who was a positive boy, with short red hair and peasant clothes with long sleeves. And he said this one would go. He moved on to the third candidate, who was also a black-haired guy with a hat and short-sleeved clothes. He took the pose of a bodybuilder and squeezed his muscles, which, by the way, he had well-developed and Willen, seeing him, said that this one was not bad. And then, when it was the turn of the fourth, she slightly opened her eyes, closing them all the time, and seeing a little boy with yellow hair, asked about what kind of monkey it was. Indignantly, Villain said that he accepts strong young men as his students, and does not arrange a set for kindergarten. The other three candidates laughed when they heard about this, but Joey pouted. She looked at her brother with an angry look and said that it was Sean, Bond's son. Willen, hearing this, laughed out loud remembering who Bond was, and then he did remember and thought that it was a nightmare. He just insulted the son of the one his little sister loves. And her little sister would not have loved anyone. Smiling very affably, Willen immediately bent down and stroked the guy on the head, said that because they had not seen each other for a long time, he did not recognize the guy. For this he asked for forgiveness. The guy, a little embarrassed, said that there was nothing wrong with it, he had grown and changed. He told Willen that his dad had told him that he had seen Willen when he was five. Laughing with a full chest, Willen took out working tools like axes and hammers and gave them to the guy, said that Uncle Willen would give him all this. This will still be useful to him, and if anything else is useful to him, then he should not be embarrassed and turn to him. With this bunch of tools that even screamed his review, the guy said that they have all this in abundance. Hearing this, Willen said that, then they should walk around the estate and buy him something delicious. Watching her brother, Joey became enraged, and slapping the instruments in Sean's hand, she said that Sean also wanted to become his disciple. When Willen heard this, he was shocked, and then frowning and taking a serious look. He said that Sean should not do this, because this is a very difficult matter. The guy, clenching his fists and with a serious face, told Willen that he was not afraid of difficulties. Bending down to Sean's height, Willen grabbed him by the shoulders and told him that he was still too young. He doesn't have the strength and stamina for blacksmithing yet, but Sean was unwavering and exclaimed that he could try. Willen, of course, did not want this, but his sister's look was threatening. He was screaming for him to accept Sean. Sighing, the man said that her sister brought a very assertive person, although this is not surprising. And then turning around, he said, everyone follow him. At this time, the neighbors who saw Villain's actions began to whisper that it looks like Villain is choosing his students again. But how many of them will be able to achieve their goal? Last time, after all, four people also came, but it seems none of them was accepted. Apparently, the children can only rely on luck because this is too difficult a selection. After taking the children to the right place, Willen called Ed, a young energetic and muscular guy with brighter red hair than Willen himself. Ed had a strong build, thick eyebrows, brown eyes, and a very energetic disposition. He ran towards the teacher when he heard his name and Willen introduced him to the candidates as his first student. Then Willen told Ed to show an example of chopping firewood, and he nodded with vigor and having prepared everything, stopped next to Singe and picked up the axe with vigor split that. Villain said that as they see, the axe blades should cut the log exactly in half, everything should be extremely smooth. This requires not only strength, but also technique. Although he had seen Ed chopping wood, not for the first time, but he still admired him. Then pointing to it, Willen said that this is the minimum standard that candidates need to achieve. They should not think that chopping wood is easy. You need to train for several years to reach Ed's level. Villain continued by saying that once they reach these minimum requirements, they will be able to become Villain's disciples. Ed, of course, was proud of the teacher's praise, but the candidates besides Sean were disheartened, saying that it was too difficult, although Sean, on the contrary, was confident that he could. Then Willen crossed his arms over his chest and told each of them to try and show what he was capable of. The first was that gloomy guy in baggy clothes. Approaching the wormwood with an axe, he swung it with all his might, but the axe got stuck in the wormwood. Shaking his head, Willen told the next one to come up. Then there was that positive guy. He screamed with all his might, and swinging, missed and did not even hit the wormwood. Seeing this, Willen didn't know what to say, and just called the next one. Now that energetic jock bodybuilder came up. Raising one hand, he greeted everyone, and then began to take the pose of a bodybuilder showing all his muscles and only then took an axe and holding it high split the tree. However, he failed to do it exactly, which is why the audience, who expected him to cope, regretfully shook their heads, sighing. 
Willen said that apparently he would not have any new students this year either. Then he told his sister to take them to the market, and if they liked something, she bought it for them. Joey, holding Sean by the shoulders, nodded and wanted to leave, but Sean stopped them. Looking with vigor, he said he hadn't tried it yet. Patting the guy by the hair, Willen said that he was too small, even an axe would not be able to lift. The guy, indignant, asked about what if he could. Then Willen sighed and handed the guy a smaller axe, told him that he would give him a try with this little axe, and then told him to be careful and not get hurt. The guy excitedly thanked him for the chance and approached the wormwood. He put the wormwood in the middle and thought that he needed to be more careful and began to prepare. In space and at home, he trained countless times. Alice said that he had passed the initial stage of the wood chopping skill. The guy hoped that it would be useful to him. Lifting the axe straight up, he also smartly landed it exactly to the wormwood and split it into two even halves. Smiling, he assumed a naive look and scratching the back of his head turned to Willen and asked if it would go like this. Villain turned to stone from shock and said that this is the same hardwood used in the manufacture of shields for warriors. Not every passerby will be able to crack it. Then, in surprise, he looked at the boy who was only as tall as his chest, and asked with interest how old he was, and the guy replied that he was nine. Hearing his answer, Willen laughed out loud and began stroking the guy on the head, saying that he was just a talent. He's so small, but already so strong. The guy, embarrassed by such praise, said that he was just very lucky. He had never done so well at home. Laughing, Villain turned to his sister, telling her to redo Bond that his son was a born blacksmith. And he, Willen, must teach him everything he knows. Joey was also glad of such good news and clenching her fist said she wanted to talk to Bond. Three months later, there was still the sound of the hammer in Willen's forge, but now the sound of the hammer of Willen and Ed was joined by the sound of the hammer and Sean. He was hammering on the heated metal on the anvil, and then he grabbed the metal with tongs and dipped it into a bucket of water, and then took out a well-made sword. Ed seeing this sword, he said that he had spent 12 years in this forge to learn how to forge steel swords, and Sean had already achieved such success in three months. Smiling brightly, Sean told Ed that Ed's experience and sharpness of mind far surpass him. Besides, Ed's coordination and strength are noticeably more coordinated than his. Grabbing Ed by the neck, Ed laughed, saying what a grown-up kid. He forges well, and even has sweet speeches, but all the doors are open to him. While the two were having fun, the door of the forge opened and Willen, with a serious face, called Sean to him, saying that he had something for him. They went to the side where Villain himself worked and there the blacksmith took out a red box. When he opened the box, there was a beautiful sword with a hook pattern in the center. Looking at Sean, Willen asked him what he thought of him. Having picked him up, the guy didn't understand why the teacher showed him it, so he just said what he thought. And he thought that this sword is not particularly different from other swords, except that its blade is a little longer than that of an ordinary sword. Then he began to examine the handle and noticed that it looked like something could be put in the handle. He became interested and therefore he asked Willen about this and he nodded and praised him, saying that he was smart beyond his years. Then picking up the sword, Villain said that his teacher, before leaving forever, handed it to him. It was a magic sword. Surprised, the guy thought he had misheard and asked Willen what he was talking about, and Willen kindly repeated what he had said, and the guy realized that there is magic in this world. Putting his hands on his waist, Villain didn't seem surprised by the guy's reaction. Rather, he expected him to be surprised when he heard about the new world. Villain decided to tell the guy that there are not only knights among them, but there are also warriors. Villain had seen them many times, but he had met the wizard only once and then, he saw only his silhouette from the back. The teacher's teacher, Willen's teacher, was a famous blacksmith and he had a good wizard friend. Together they created many different magical tools that spread the fame of them throughout the kingdom. Then lifting the lid of a small box inside the box, Willen showed Sean three colorful balls. One was yellow, the second blue and the third red. Pointing to them, Villain said that the sources of magic are mostly of the same nature, but differ in particular. These three spheres that were lying here are magic cores that are extracted from magical beasts. If you insert one of the balls into the glass of the sword, in the hands of the owner of the sword, concentrate all the power. Villain, in order to show the guy how to do it, took a red ball and inserted it into an empty glass on the hilt of the sword and gave the sword to the guy. The guy in shock and excitedly took the sword and began to examine it, and then began to swing it, but nothing happened. Not understanding what was the matter, the guy asked Willen why nothing was happening, and Willen, shaking his head, said that the sword had been broken for a long time and naturally that it did not work. Villain pointed to the last thing in the box, namely an iron plate, and said that after the death of the two creators of the sword left a grimoire, which describes a way to create magical artifacts, 
but, unfortunately, no one could understand it. Willen's teacher hoped that Willen himself would pass this on to the most promising of the students. Then, after finishing his speech, Willen put everything back in the box and handed it to Sean, telling him that he was a good boy and Willen wanted to give this sword to him. Villain hoped that the guy would reveal the secrets of this sword. Night came and the guy was in his virtual world with a sword and magic cores and a grimoire. Lifting the iron plate, the guy looked at him uncomprehendingly and said that no matter how much he looked, it seemed to him that it was an ordinary piece of iron. He wondered if it was really a grimoire. While he was looking at it, something suddenly appeared on the record. Excitedly, he began to look at the strange writing that kept appearing. Seeing this, he thought that Master Willen was right. These are indeed symbols that he had never met before. At that moment, Alice appeared in front of him and asked him what he was doing and why he suddenly started using spiritual power. The guy tilted his head, asking what kind of spiritual power. The girl said that consuming spiritual power could expand his body boundaries. Usually this ability appears after passing the second part of the initial stage of the gymnastics course, but he managed to awaken it ahead of time. Although this is good news, it may also have side effects in the form of a short headache. The guy started flipping through the tying with the help of a thread plate and saw that Tex was still appearing on it. Then closing it, he asked Alice if she could decipher the symbols on the grimoire. The girl called the chairs, sat in it, leaned on it and began to decipher the plate. Four schemes of energy chains were recorded on four iron sheets out of five available. The guy asked why it was necessary and Alice said she didn't know. After looking at her with a dumb look, the guy suspiciously asked her if she had accidentally collected information about Valina. The girl tilted her head, and the guy explained that they both behave like this. The girl, not paying attention to it, said that he was lucky she was able to display the symbols here. The first sheet said that he should start learning from the fifth sheet. The guy squinted, asking Alice if she was sure that she needed to start with the fifth sheet. And then he started reading the translation from Alice and said he didn't understand anything. Alice suggested that he try to touch the text and the guy, squinting even more, said that it seemed to him that it would go sideways for him. But still he took a chance and touched the holographic sheet. He lit up and began to turn into a clot of energy. And then the guy was pulled into some strange place with four formations similar to magic circles. The guy, looking around, realized that this place somehow resembles space. And then he switched to viewing formations and realized that he did not understand anything. Except that he could distinguish them by color and the fact that they do not look like each other. The guy, realizing that he was concentrating too much on the circles, began to look for Alice but she did not answer. Instead, a huge old man, woven of blue energy, appeared in front of him and asked him if he was the chosen one. The guy looked with surprise at the bundle of energy, in the form of an old man with a long beard and mustache hiding his mouth. The old man had kind eyes and rather unique eyebrows. His gray hair was pulled back and he was wearing a robe. Seeing him, Sean asked who he was and where he was. The old man, seeing the guy's panic, laughed loudly and told him that he shouldn't worry so much. Then, seeing how the guy calms down, the old man smiled kindly, and he said that he was the creator of this grimoire, and this place was a magical space created by him. Realizing that he was safe, Sean finally relaxed, and hearing that this old man was the owner of the grimoire, he realized that he was that friend wizard of the teacher, teacher, teacher of his teacher Valina, laughing at such glories. The old man decided to play along with the guy and asked him that then he should be the successor, 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 his friend's successor. The old man, stroking his beard, laughed at the realization that so much time had passed since then. Sean, realizing what the old man was thinking, said that his teacher Willen told him that this old man lived two or three hundred years ago. Nodding, the old man smiled and said that the guy's teacher was not lying. Right now, only a fragment of his soul that remained in the grimoire spoke to Sean. When the guy heard it, he wondered what happened to the magician's body, although he guessed. But the old man, seeing his interest, confirmed that he had long since died. Disappointed, the guy looked at the ground and said that, and he thought that wizards live for a very long time. Seeing this, the old man decided to cheer up the guy and told him that the stronger the wizard, the longer his life path. He had lived for 200 years as a mid-level wizard. Overjoyed by this news, the guy exclaimed with delight that there are a lot of wizards in the world, since they live so long, but the old man doused him with cold water. He turned his back and shook his head and said it didn't work that way. In this world, among thousands of people, probably only one is born with the ability to magic. Moreover, even if such people begin to study magic, most of them remain students. You can meet real wizards no more often than a phoenix feather or a unicorn horn. That is, their cat cried a lot. 
The guy, seeing Sean's shock, smiled and decided to calm him down, saying that this did not apply to him, because he was lucky to move into the space of the grimoire and meet him. This means that the guy has the makings to study magic. Scratching his head, the guy awkwardly said that he was probably the only one who wanted to study magic, just because he wanted to live longer. Smiling, the old man said that in his long life he had never heard of such a goal. It seems that the guy did not think about other things that would open up to him in the world of magic. The old man wanted to show the greatness of magicians, and therefore, he said that now his horizons would expand. Raising his hand, the old man showed how the king bowed before the old man in a robe and with a staff. The old spirit grinned and said that for the time being they would not touch the wizards, but would start with the students. Even if you are a student, you will be able to gain respect from the king himself, because wizards are not only radishes, but also extremely strong. Then the old spirit changed the picture to the fact that the same disciple was standing on a rock and looked at the thousandth army below, and then began to use magic. After its application, the sky was filled with clouds and columns of lightning poured out, destroying enemies in packs. The old spirit looked at the shock Sean, and said that if one of the sides uses the help of a wizard in a war, the outcome of the battle will already be predetermined, because the wizard can turn the whole battlefield upside down in an instant. Here it is the undeniable power of wizards. The old man, raising his hand, changed the location again, now to the library and told the guy that if the wizard wanted to defend the kingdom, he would be provided with all the necessary resources and a monastery would be erected for him in which he could immerse himself in the study of magic. The abode of wizards is called the Magic Tower. After finishing the performance, the old man removed the paintings and told the guy that this is what he should strive for. In principle, a true wizard will strive for this. The guy with admiration, who was watching all this, turned excitedly and asked the old man if he could become his teacher, because he really wants to become a wizard. But when he turned around, he saw that the wizard was disappearing. Worried, he asked what was the matter and the old man, sighing said that it looked like the time allotted for the fragment of his soul was coming to an end. The old man finally said that although this grimoire is only an introduction to magic, but it should be enough for him for a long time. Sean didn't want the old man to leave like that, but he couldn't do anything, and after a while, he started hearing Alice's voice. When he came to, he heard the worried voice of a girl who told him that he had been unconscious for a while. The guy realized that he was lying in the hands of a witch like some kind of princess was very embarrassed and pushing her away immediately stood up, saying that he had already woken up, and that she did not snuggle so close. After he got up and regained consciousness, the guy started telling Alice what had happened. She, folding her hands in a cross nodding, said that in this case it is not surprising that he lost consciousness. The guy resolutely clenched his fists, and exclaimed that he had decided everything. Now he wants to study magic. He will live the longest and will become the strongest wizard of history. Alice rolled her eyes and decided to cool her master. She asked him if he had asked about ways to study magic. The guy not only cooled down, but also petrified and cracked from shock and disappointment, because he did not have time to ask that wizard about it. Alice, seeing her master's condition, sighed and decided to help him. She picked up the plate on which the grimoire was written and told him that during Sean's blackout, she managed to analyze the grimoire. This of course pleased the guy. And then suddenly the guy came up with a question that he forgot about. Then he went into that space, and he decided to ask it now. He asked Alice how she was able to reproduce these iron sheets in virtual space. The girl, raising her finger, began to explain, saying that this is a common method of searching in the subconscious. She produced what he saw through his memories, and then she added that if he later wanted to refresh something in his memory, he could do it in virtual space. The guy, embarrassed and almost crying, asked her that she could see everything he could see and the girl nodded, which made him even more ashamed remembering how he took a shower. The girl, seeing his embarrassment, chuckled and decided to help the guy to divert the topic, and therefore looked at him complacently and said that she was able to master the ways of studying magic. The guy came to his senses in an instant and exclaimed that she was too smart. But the girl cooled his ardor again, saying that before he started training, he would have to develop his spiritual strength. The fifth sheet of the grimoire just contains information on how to do this. Walking in the virtual space, the girl said that when Sean's spiritual power reaches a sufficient level, he will be able to begin studying magic according to the methods described on the fourth sheet. The guy, of course, became interested in how he should develop his spiritual power, to which Alice, of course, answered by showing some kind of circle on the screen. The yellow circle consisted of two suns, one large circle and several small circles inside the large circle. Seeing this, the guy asked what it was and if it had something to do with spiritual power. He didn't understand this complicated picture at all. 
The girl, smiling, snuggled up to the guy's back and said that in fact everything is very simple. He just needs to divide everything into parts and look at everything in an organized way according to the patterns in the image. The guy blushed from the softness on his back, and the girl's words that the patterns go in a certain order no longer reached him. And after a while the blood gushed out of the guy's nose and he said that he could no longer do that. This of course surprised the girl, and she began to ask why the guy's nose went to the roof and why he fell again. After a while in a hot forge, next to the furnace, the measured sound of a hammer on an anvil was heard. Willen and Ed watched as a little boy of nine years old made weapons. Willen, with a bit of sadness and admiration, said that he had not noticed how this guy had achieved such results. It was hard to believe that he was only nine years old. Smiling, Ed said that it was not surprising that the guy liked this occupation. How could there be more interesting things than blacksmithing? Wiping the sweat from his forehead, the guy thought that fatigue at work had decreased probably due to the fact that he started training again with the help of radio gymnastics. Now his body is noticeably stronger, but his progress in spiritual power disappoints him. He has been training spiritual powers for several days, but there are no results. Maybe it's because he hasn't found a suitable way yet. Villain put his hand on the guy's shoulder, said that the time was already late and asked him to leave to finish the work for Ed, and he should pay attention to rest, because work and rest should be balanced. Smiling, the guy thanked Willen for his concern and left the forge and went to his room. The guy, smiling, thought that Mr. Villain and others would not find out that he was studying in a virtual space and only three hours of sleep was enough for his body to return to its best shape. Putting on his glasses, the guy lay down on the bed and got into virtual reality again. Alice noticed Sean standing in front of the image of the circle and said that he was early enough today. Nodding, Sean said that this way he would have more time to train his spiritual power. The witch, worried, asked if everything was fine, because last time the guy failed to reach even 60%. The guy looked at the circle with concentration, and said that it was because of these failures that he wanted to study this circle even more and beat it up. And then suddenly remembering what Alice was doing, the guy shyly shouted at her, so that this time she would not interfere. Sighing, the girl nodded, and the guy, raising his hand and pointing two fingers into the circle, held one hand with the other and began to direct spiritual force into the circle. The circle, which was yellow, began to fill up, turning into blue, but after a minute it began to dissolve back. Growling the guy further increased his concentration, and the flow of spiritual power began to fill the circle back. It was almost full, but the last push was missing. Shouting with all his strength, the guy directed the last drops of his spiritual power into this circle, and now he lit up in blue, like the circle. Seeing this, the girl happily jumped up and said that he could and congratulated him. Then, smiling, she said that she did not expect anything else from her master and hugged the guy. The system began to rebuild the circle and after a while a new yellow circle appeared with a more complex shape. This circle consisted of various geometric shapes and drawings of the moon, the sun, the stars and some symbols. The girl, smiling, pointed to the circle and told the guy that it was time to pass the second milestone. Giving up the ghost, Sean desperately asked how many more there were. Next, that there will be red light, green light, Dalgona and glass bridge or something. Due to overwork, the boy was breathing languidly and sweating profusely. Seeing this, Alice, worried, asked him if he should continue because soon his body would not stand it. The guy, blushing from fatigue, said that there was not much left, because he could not give up. And after making the last jerk and sending the last fractions of the squeezed spiritual force into the circle, he finally filled it with spiritual force completely and shouted that he filled it. Alice, who was sitting quietly on the sidelines, applauded his success and went up to him and began to wipe the sweat from his sweaty forehead praising him. Sean was worth his praise, because he had been training spiritual strength for only the third day, and he had already completed a rather complicated scheme. The guy still felt very tired, but the feeling of happiness from the achieved goal quickly filled him with energy. He dressed so as not to be left with a half-naked torso and asked Alice to stop talking to him like some kind of baby. Although it was quite difficult and tedious to pump spiritual power, but after each workout he felt it noticeably increase. Alice became interested in the current characteristics and condition of her master and she checked his characteristics and was surprised to notice that they jumped to an incredible level. She looked at Sean with disbelief and leaning over squinted and asked him if it was true that he was 9 years old. If it wasn't, then she wouldn't tell anyone. One, she was just interested. The guy, laughing stupidly, stepped back and said that he was nine and there were no secrets, and then asked with interest what happened. 
The girl sighed heavily from her failure and stood up and raised her finger starting an explanation of the results of the study. According to their data, the system showed that Sean's training for this month had already allowed him to develop spiritual strength to a level higher than that of ordinary people. Delighted with this result, the guy began to look at the girl with expectation and shouting with his shining eyes about what his spiritual strength was. Alice, of course, noticed the eagerness of the owner to find out his strength and therefore calling the plates began to analyze and in a few minutes the answer was ready. She looked at the guy with a smile and said that at the moment, his spiritual power already meets the minimum requirements for the plate training method. But the girl did not finish something and Sean, realizing this, squinted and told her to continue. Alice, seeing the guy's enthusiasm, did not want to say this, but he forced her inside. She said that now there are only his parameters in her database, but judging by the information from the grimoire, he is the slowest in the rate of development of spiritual power among all students of magic. As Alice thought, there was no trace of her former happiness left. The guy was in despair, seeing that he was even giving up the ghost. The girl apprehensively grabbed him by the shoulders and began to shake him so that he would not lose his spirit and cheer up because it's still not too late to change his profession. Thoughts suddenly crept into the guy's head and quickly regaining consciousness, he grabbed the girl by the shoulders and with a serious mien that confused the girl, asked that she had once said that as long as his body copes, he can freely change the time ratios. Alice nodded, worried that her master would not come up with any dangerous adventure. Then the guy asked if his body could withstand the ratio of 10 to 1. The girl shook her head regretfully. But the guy who was expecting this asked what needed to be done so that he could set it up like this. The girl immediately replied that he should learn the movement of the first part of the initial level of the radio gymnastics course. Then the guy, frowning, cautiously asked about the 50 to 1 ratio and Alice also immediately said that he should learn the movement of the second part of the intermediate level of radio gymnastics. Swallowing, the guy was even afraid to ask about the ratio of 100 to 1. But still taking the courage, he asked, but the ruthless Alice, not even a bit worried, also quickly answered him that he needed to complete the study of all the movements of the average level of this course. Taking a deep breath, the guy remembered all the pain he went through while studying gymnastics, and, to be honest, he didn't want to go back to it, but for the sake of his future and longevity, he still decided. It's certainly very difficult, but it's not hopeless. As long as he had Alice and the passive learning method, time wasn't a problem. That's how he decided to do it, and two months later, when he completed the main training outside and entered the virtual space, he thought that he had finished the fourth lesson of the first part, which means he can hope for an increase in the time ratio. While the guy was thinking about difficult things, suddenly the clapping of the Lapishka who poured festive ribbons on his head scared him, and when he came to, he asked the smiling witch what it all meant, and she grabbed his shoulders from behind, congratulated him on passing, and that he could now adjust the time ratio 1 to 8. But then she sighed sadly, approaching the guy's ear, saying that lately, Sean has been constantly studying, without visiting his Alice outside, and she becomes sad about it. The guy, blushing, threw the girl away and shouted in her direction so that she would calm down and quickly teach him the movement from the fifth lesson and not suffer from bullshit. He rather wanted to bring the time ratio to 10 to 1. Dissatisfied, Alice chuckled and told him that he had completely abandoned the training of his spiritual power and then summoning the broken magic sword of the guy. She said that she had completely scanned it and recently she still realized that the guy could use spiritual power to reforge it. Surprised by this revelation, the guy even fell into a stupor, and in order to somehow help the guy, the girl said that in order for the scheme of creation of this sword to work, at least 200 units of spiritual power are required. Otherwise it cannot be repaired and, grinning, the girl approached the guy and mocking him said that he had only a hundred with what that is, units. Embarrassed by this mockery, the guy did not know what to say, but the girl, grinning, straightened up and moved away from him and called for as many as four different circles, saying that according to her calculations, if Sean starts training spiritual strength daily for 50 hours from today, then in a maximum of two months, he will be able to reforge his magic the sword. Looking at all these squiggles on the walls, called magic circles, the guy in a panic shouted that he could not, and did not want to do it, but of course Alice was not convinced by such childish babble. Another lap was overcome and the guy, grinning, clenched his fist, delighted with his perseverance and results. At this time, Alice appeared behind him and congratulated him on another success, and also reported that his spiritual strength began to grow noticeably faster. Surprised by the abrupt appearance, the guy turned around and saw the girl, and noticed that for some reason she was buggy. Frightened by this, he asked her what was wrong with her and she, feeling tired, fell right on Sean 
and they both fell to the ground. The girl, looking at the guy with a sad look, said that she was running out of battery, and in order for her to disappear in a dream, he had to replace her battery. The guy fell into a stupor at the beginning, and then indignantly asked if the girl was not from the high, tech future. Did she need to be charged? Could not the people of the future come up with something like without a charging AI? But then Sean looked at the almost crying girl and sighed and asked how he should do it. The girl fell on her side and with difficulty pronounced that the guy took out the battery and left it in a sunny place. It should automatically replenish its charge, but she also added that at this time she would not be able to be near him. Nodding, the guy excitedly asked how long he needed to leave the battery in the sun and the girl, smiling, said that half a month should be enough for a full charge, if of course the rays are intense. The guy looked sadly at the disappearing girl and said that he would miss her. The girl also became sad from this, and sighed and asked about what they had talked about not so long ago, namely whether he had prepared everything for the creation of a magic sword. Realizing that this was a serious topic, the guy immediately assumed a submissive and serious look and turning to Alice as a teacher, said that he had prepared everything and was waiting for further instructions. The girl reproduced some kind of scheme and the boy instinctively realized that this was a scheme for recreating a magic sword. Disappearing, the girl said that now the guy needs to remember this scheme thoroughly. He has to memorize every line and their sequence. Then the guy excitedly asked if he could reforge the sword if he remembered this scheme. The girl nodded, said that theoretically this is so, but they will have to test it in practice, which is natural with any experiments. The guy, grinning, realized that this scheme is quite simple, relative to the same circles that he learns and fills every day. But this scheme had its own peculiarity. When looking at the circles, he did not get such dizziness as when looking at this diagram. The girl, smiling and realizing what he was thinking, said that he would gradually get used to this. If his spiritual force training could be compared to riding a bicycle, then the sword circuit is similar to driving a car. Now the guy needs to gradually get used to this feeling. The guy nodded, said that he would not let her down and thanked her finally. Alice, touched by this behavior of the child kissed him on the forehead and said that she was waiting for their next meeting and wished him success. As soon as she disappeared, the guy was thrown into the real world and unable to resist dizziness. He fell to the fifth point. Clutching his head, he sighed. In fact, he lied to Alice. Just one look at the diagram was enough to make the guy's head shake, and everything was in his eyes. The guy clenched his fists and stood up, mentally telling Alice not to worry. He won't give up, because he has her. One morning, the guy was sitting at the table with Willen and Ed and had breakfast. Although he was having breakfast, but all his thoughts were about the solar panel. It had already been almost a month, he was wondering if Alice had charged up or not. Nodding to his thoughts, the guy took a bite of bread and decided to try inserting the battery back in the evening. At this time, Willen, who was eating a sandwich, started a conversation. He looked at the guy and said that Sean has been developing very fast lately, and he is impressed by it. These words made the guy feel the approaching danger, because they are usually forbidden to talk during lunch, and now he himself has spoken. Tensely, he thanked Willen, saying that it was all thanks to his instructions. Villain smiled and said that one should thank the guy's talent for forging. He was just born for forging steel. Ed immediately vigorously supported the teacher, saying that Sean is really incredibly talented, and he will certainly become a famous blacksmith. Surprised that his fears were only his glitches, the guy relaxed and smiled, embarrassed by such intense praise. But still, he was not comfortable with the brilliant looks of his teacher, Ed and other people expecting him to become a great blacksmith, because in fact he wanted to become a wizard. Then why do all these people want the opposite? Then Willen, having finished eating, remembered the important news and told Sean that he should prepare well. The guy, not understanding what the teacher was leading to, tilted his head and he understood what the student wanted, explained that soon the night cattle would return, and then he would have to show the fruits of these difficult months. Willen wanted to ask him to take Sean and Ed to Say City so that they could take part in the beginner blacksmith exam. Only now, the guy realized that his feelings had not let him down and he wanted to delicately refuse, saying that it was somehow too fast and unexpected. But Villain stretched out his hand and stopped the guy. Then getting up from the table, he let me down and said that he and Ed are already very strong, and then recommended the guy to think about what he wants to forge during the competition. Then Willen realized that it was too much pressure on the guy, and therefore, in order to remove a little of his burden, he raised his finger up and told him that he shouldn't worry too much. He and Ed just need to show the best they can and Willen was sure his students would definitely pass. Nodding, the guy said that he would do everything in his power. Willen went out and therefore the guy went to his bed, which was lying under the window, from which the rays of the sun were served. 
There was a battery on the windowsill and taking it. He put it on his glasses and for some reason was excited about the meeting soon. Thinking about why he was so excited, he realized that he hadn't seen Alice for a month, and that was probably why he was excited. The virtual space soon blocked the real space, and the guy reported that he had returned, although no one responded to his call. With concern, he called her several more times and began to look around, but the girl did not appear no matter how much time had passed, although only a few minutes had passed. Clutching his head, the guy thought with concern that it looked like Alice hadn't charged up yet, and then the witch herself appeared on a broom saying that she was here, and then giggled and asked the guy if he hadn't missed her so much. Surprised by the sudden appearance of the girl, the guy excitedly asked her if she was alright, and then said that he was afraid that something had happened to machine learning. Bending down from the broom to the ground, Alice, approaching the guy, said that she was just teasing her sweet master. The girl, approaching the guy, said that she had heard a rumor that his master had a chance to leave here for the big city. The guy fell into a stupor for a second, thinking about how the girl found out if she was charging all the time, and then decided not to fool her head with it and just asked her about it and the girl, smiling, said that he just read his memories when he appeared here. Sighing, the guy turned away from her, saying that she was just like a stalker, and after all, children also need their own personal space. And then he, saying that he would go to train his spiritual strength, went on. But before he could take a couple of steps, the girl stopped him with a smile, asking if he thought this was a good opportunity. The guy turned around, not understanding what she was talking about, and the girl, who was used to such a look, explained, saying that he had a chance to leave here and find a better place. The guy indignantly asked why he needed it. He was only 10 years old, there were no strengths, and why she thought he should choose to move. Smiling and coming close to the guy, the girl said that, judging by her observations, the guy has enough strength, and then poking him in the nose with her finger, she added that he should not forget that staying here, he cannot find new knowledge to study magic. If he wants to succeed in magic, then he should get out of here as soon as possible. After thinking about the girl's words, the guy realized that she was right about something, and then scratching his head, he decided to try. The girl, seeing this, smiled and said that she believes that if a guy wants to master magic, he should get the opportunity to interact with magic and for this he needs to show the knight something special. The guy looked at the girl again with an uncomprehending look and she nodded with a wide smile and said that, for example, he could restore the magic sword. And then the guy remembered that dizzy, literally scheme, and then trembling bit his lip. Some ten-year-old blacksmith should already cause surprise, and if this blacksmith repairs a magic sword, then wouldn't it be too much for others? That's what the guy was thinking. The girl, realizing Sean's fear, due to the fact that she had long ago learned to read his expression, with a mute face, said that if he just wanted to waste his life, then he could die here. But if he wants to reach out to the whole world, he needs to prove himself and show his strength. He is not a nobleman and not a magic teacher, everything depends on how he shows himself to others. Proper fame is mandatory, because without it, people will not recognize him and, accordingly, no one will pay attention to him. Of course, all decisions are in his hands, but Alice was worried about him and therefore advised him to think carefully about her words. In any case, his fate will be decided by him. A month has passed since Sean's last conversation with Alice, the guy's mental strength can finally draw a magic circle for sword processing normally. Sign. He told himself that this was another success in the piggy bank of his future, and then turning around, he looked at Alice, who was sitting on a broomstick looking through something. The girl, feeling the look, asked him about what he wanted and the guy said that he finally got it. The girl immediately approached him and nodded looking at the diagram. This time the drawing was fast and accurate, so the girl decided to praise the owner. After the praise that confused the guy, he smiled ominously and asked if he wanted to test the power of this magic. The guy, surprised by her words, asked that this structure is also magical, and the girl, as always, raised her finger during her explanations, and said that in fact it works very simply. He has to go outside and imagine the picture in his mind. The guy squinted doubtfully, and the girl, seeing that he was in no hurry, approached him and told him to try it faster, otherwise, somehow sorry for his efforts. The guy, not understanding why the girl was rushing her so much, agreed, but before leaving he asked her why she wanted him to try it so much. The girl, having opened her schemes, said that she just wanted to collect all sorts of data about magic. This world is not the same as her original one, so in order for her to create an ideal database, she needs to collect more source data. The guy, looking at the desperate girl, grinned and exclaimed that he would try, and then asked the girl about the name of magic. The girl, smiling, sent him an air shot, saying that magic is called blade magic. 
Taking off his glasses, he thought that first he needed to build a magic map. Closing his eyes, he imagined that magic sword and only from this he felt his spirit power begin to deplete greatly. But clenching his teeth, he concentrated harder. But the ringing and drums in his head did not subside. But at that moment, he felt that he was controlling spiritual power and began to collect it between his palms. Clenching his teeth, he barely managed with the collected energy, because now his mental energy was almost at zero. Unable to restrain a clot of energy, he shot it at the ceiling and, in surprise, raising his head, saw a hole in the wooden roof from which sunlight was oozing. For a few seconds he just stood there and stared blankly at the hole, thinking about what it was at all. Such speed, is this really the deadly power of magic? Finally coming to his senses, he began to test his spiritual strength and realized that there was not much mental strength left in his mind, and it seemed to the guy that his strength was too small to hold this spell. It looks like he will need a lot more effort in the future. He went back into the virtual world and was met by an excited girl, asking him what he thought about the power of blade magic. The guy once again remembered that super fast shot and with a bit of fear, said that she was really not bad, she could even catch up with a sand eagle, but it was very dangerous. The girl brought up several screens with her analyses, and said that magic is not perfect yet, based on her calculations. This magic has many more opportunities for improvement, because Alice, winking at the guy, asked him to wait for tomorrow and she will come up with an optimization plan. From the realization that it was possible to improve, maybe even strengthen, the spell made the guy shudder, and then he realized another incredible thing and in shock asked Alice about how she could improve magic. The girl, understanding the condition of the guy, began to explain by raising her index finger up. According to the principles of mechanics, the speed and killing power of lead shot is much less than a bullet. If you compress the air to the current state of the bullet, then you can increase its maximum power. The guy did not understand at all what the air and the bullet had to do with it, but the girl continued to give advice, saying that he should draw a cross in front of the warhead so that it looked like a diffuser. The effect of this should definitely be better. The girl began to sort out the options even without looking at the guy, and he, looking at him, thought with horror that this training machine was not as simple as he initially thought. In a green couch on the middle of the field there was a square piece of wood in thickness reaching the size of one palm, and in height reaching the size of Sean himself. This piece of wood was standing, sunbathing and did not touch anyone, when suddenly a clot of blue energy fell right into its center and came out from the other side, leaving a huge hole in it. The guy, looking at his shot, was very pleased. With such results, when the night is a cattle that will arrive in a couple of months, because of the cases that have appeared, he can show the highest class. Two more months of training and his mental strength, which has become even stronger thanks to passive training, will become even stronger and he will be ready to meet and surprise Knight Scott. After Alice's modification, they renamed the magic of the blade, due to the fact that the shape became similar to a bullet, to the magic of a bullet. Thanks to Alice's modifications, she really became many times stronger and when used now she spent less magical energy. At this time, the guy heard Ed curl it and scattering her magic, she screamed that she was going to go now. When Sean arrived in the city, he saw that a lot of people had gathered in the square. It felt like the whole city was going to meet the Knight of Cattle, and there wasn't even an order for citizens to come out and greet him. Ed, smiling contentedly, explained to the guy that the whole point is that everyone respects Knight Scott. Thanks to him, they can fully eat and not die of hunger, so it's natural that everyone is grateful to him from the bottom of their hearts. Sean quite often heard the words, said only by Ed, from his father. He also often repeated that the Knight Scott is a good man and a good lord. He tries very hard to keep his people from starving. There are a lot of people on this land and it is suitable for agricultural work. Plants and vegetables grow well here, thanks to the fact that they are well taken care of. If the Lord is kind, then no one will die of hunger here. While they were walking to the forge, Villain saw them and called them to him and all three went somewhere outside the city. Ed said that the knights should be here soon, and Sean decided to look around, in search of whether they could be seen from here. He climbed one stone and began to look around and soon saw someone walking on horseback. It looks like the warrior also noticed these three, because he raised his hand in their greeting. Ed, fascinated by the majestic appearance of the knights, with a twinkle in his eyes, said that they were really cool. He would also like to be a knight. The guy looked at him with incomprehension and asked if Ed was always saying that he wanted to be an advanced craftsman. Clenching his fist, the red-haired guy, burning with enthusiasm, said that of course he would become a craftsman. But he also did not deny that being a knight is very cool. Sean, seeing such honesty in his friend's face, could not help but smile kindly. 
After a while, the knights arrived here, and the knight who was standing in the center of the entire army jumped off the saddle and looked in the direction of villain. The knight was in full uniform and had blue hair arranged in two directions and a square beard connected with a short mustache. When Willen and Scott met their eyes, both jerked towards each other and hit each other with their shoulders and then happily laughed and hugged. Then, clutching his hand like an arm wrestling cattle smiling, he said that it was an honor for him to see his friend meeting him. Willen squeezed his lordship's hand and said that he could see that he had only grown prettier all this time. With a nod, they let go of each other's hands and the cattle looked at one of the knights nodding to him, and the knight went somewhere and brought one rather large bag and gave it to the cattle. The latter, taking it, looked at his friend and said that this time he had brought something to Willen. Dylan took the bag and opened it and saw a lot of damaged weapons and metal armor there. Realizing that something serious had happened, he asked the cattle about what they were facing. Scott, crossing his arms over his chest, clicked his tongue and not quite said that on the way back they met with some problems. But there was nothing special. Willen handed the bag of armor to Ed and asked his friend how much he planned to stay with them this time. And after thinking about it, he said that at least he would stay for half a month. Villain, realizing that the time had come, said that his students had already pumped their skills pretty well. If his lordship would please, the next time he went to the castle, could he take them with him? After thinking about it, Scott put his hands on his waist and saw Ed behind Willen and asked his friend if Ed had really become so good. Villain smiled and said that he was already forging iron at a good level and could quite participate in the exam for the title of a novice craftsman. Scott, smiling contentedly, approached the red-haired guy and slapped him on the shoulder and said that if he went to the castle as soon as he returned, he would definitely give Ed a shop. Surprised and slightly frightened by the knight's generosity, Ed said that he did not need any shops. It was enough for him to be with his teacher. Laughing loudly, Scott told Willen that he had a very loyal student. Then the cattle remembered that Villain had said that he had students, not a student, because he was interested. Looking around the area, asked Villain where another of his students was and soon noticed a child here. Willen happily said that his name is Sean and despite the fact that he is very talented. And Scott, smiling, sat down next to Sean and thanked him that he had met him, and then gave him candy, told him to run and share it with his friends. And then, standing up, he asked where his second disciple was. From the awkwardness of the situation, Willen coughed dryly, pushed Sean forward and showed him. The shocked cattle looked at the little boy and then abruptly turned to a friend, said, don't joke with him, this guy is just a kid. Of course, Sean did not like that his name was Baby, but he still kept silent, so as not to show discourtesy and let the teacher explain everything. Willen, not knowing how to explain to his friend, just told the truth, namely that even though Sean is still small, his abilities are no worse than Ed's. The cattle still didn't really believe in these words, but he didn't want to offend his friend, and therefore suggested that his disciple arrange a test in the forge of villain. But still the cattle could not doubt that this kid could at least lift the big hammer of villain. Of course, his smug face was soon shocked when he saw how the guy easily knocks the hammer in the anvil. Of course, Willen was pleased with this reaction of his friend, but, and the cattle didn't care that he was wrong. He immediately approached Sean and grabbed him by the hands, excitedly said that this guy had muscles in bad weather. Scott could not restrain himself and still suggested to the guy that he was very excited, with what if he wanted to follow him and become a knight. Feeling uncomfortable with such treatment, the guy still asked the man, smiling, why he wanted the guy to become a knight. Scott, looking at him shrewdly, said that of course it was because of the guy's strength. Strength is the foundation of the knight's profession. At such a young age, he is already so strong. Based on this, he will definitely become a very strong knight. Excited by the words of the cattle, the guy imagined himself looking high at others in super shiny purple armor and could not hold back his fantasies. His strength depended on the morning stretching. If he continued to train the same way, he could become a knight even stronger than Scott. Scott, seeing that he was interested in the guy, began to praise his profession, saying that there is nothing in this world better than becoming a knight. After he becomes a knight, his status will rise to noble. Then he gave himself as an example, because he even had an estate, didn't the guy want to have the same? At that moment, an angry villain entered their discussion, shouting that Sean was his disciple. He was already a good craftsman, why was the cattle trying to make a knight out of him? Scott, dissatisfied with the intervention of a friend, told him not to compare the noble profession of a knight with others, and then asked him if he knew how many people dreamed of becoming real knights. Villain, in anger, shouted that he did not know, and blocking Sean with his body, added that. But he knows that every year countless knights lose their precious lives for various reasons. Scott became serious and said that if the knights had not experienced pain and suffering, 
they would not have been able to become true knights. But Scott was sure that with Sean's talent, he could pass these tests. Of course, Villain did not just give up on his student and began to talk countermeasures, and soon a verbal battle broke out between the two friends. Looking at them, Sean thought about all this. Even he had a chance to become a noble and get lands, of course he would have to fight for it, and he might even die. In a previous life, he just wanted to live peacefully, of course, it's far from war. But everyone knows perfectly well what war is, it takes the lives of everyone, not sparing no matter gender, age or profession. To protect yourself from war or during war, you need to have strength, reputation, power and influence. After thinking a little, the guy decided to live as long as possible, since God gave him such a great chance. Therefore, they did not want to get involved with the war in any way. Coughing dryly, this attracted attention to himself. He bowed in front of Scott and thanked him for his offer. But then he refused, saying that he was a disciple of Master Willen, and he could not betray him. For this, he sincerely apologized to the Lord. Scott regretfully abandoned his idea, but finally said that if the guy ever changes his mind, he can always come to him. Surprised by this turn, Willen was also pleased. In fact, he did not expect that Sean does not crave fame and fame, but just wants to become a craftsman. He really was a good child. Laughing, he told his students to show Knight Scott what they could. Those standing still both nodded. First, Ed started. After bowing 90 degrees, he said that time was limited, so he would show Mr. Knight the rough handling of a heavy sword. Scott nodded and told Tom to get started. Ed, taking a serious look, put the billet of a large sword on the anvil, and then began to increase the fire. After the fire intensified, he brought the workpiece to an acceptable heat, and began to forge a sword out of it. After processing, he cooled the sword in a bucket of cold water and then started the process anew, so repeating several times in a circle. He approached the sharpening stone and began to sharpen the already good-looking, large sword. Then he presented the sword for Scott to see. Having raised the sword, the cattle slightly tossed it several times to check the weight, then waved it several times and nodded, began to inspect the sharpness of the sword by easily passing the blade with the plaits. With a satisfied look, he said that the weight, balance, and even the sharpness of the sword are just wonderful, it can be used in battle. Surprised by this, he asked Willen if he was going to make Ed a receiver. Villain nodded and said with satisfaction that Ed's hot talent is not enough, but he is very hardworking which compensates for the lack of the first one. Besides, in the profession of a blacksmith, love of work is the most important thing. Grinning, Scott told his friend to give him the second student, because now he has a successor, but Scott has not found a successor yet. Smiling with all his teeth, Willen told his friend not to even dream about it, and then, in search of another student, he shook his head. Sean was in the corner and having attracted the attention of the teacher and his friend. He came closer and bowed, said that today he did not want to create anything. Then Willen asked, then, what he was going to do. Realizing that this was his chance, Scott immediately said loudly that if he was not as wonderful as Willen said, then he could forget about the city. Sean, not listening to him, smiling contentedly, took out a magic sword from his bosom, which surprised two people, especially Willen was shocked. But Sean was pleased with himself in this reaction and said that today he would restore the magic sword. Holding up the magic sword that Willen had given him, he said that he planned to restore it. Scott approached the sword with interest and began to examine it and said that he did not hear it, although the sword really looked unusual. Wiping the cold sweat from his forehead, Willen nodded and said that, as Sean had said, it was a magic sword. This shocked Scott and he recoiled from the boy, shouting, asking where he got this weapon from. Smiling, Sean said that the master gave it to him. This shocked the knight even more, and he turned to his friend and asked him with his mouth wide open that Willen could forge magic weapons. But he slightly awkwardly, coughing, said that his teacher had also given him a sword. But unfortunately, this magic weapon was damaged and Willen could not restore it. Lifting his jaw with difficulty, the knight said that he was in shock, and then turning to the guy, asked him if he could really restore the sword. The guy, approaching the furnace, said that he wanted to test his strength. Seeing the confident student, Willen couldn't help but be proud of him. At this time, one of the assistants of the forge increased the fire, and the guy put the sword under fire, but soon realized that the power of the flame was not strong enough, the heat was not enough. Willen also noticed this, pushed aside the temporary worker, and said that he would help the student himself, and then looking at Sean, nodded to him to prepare, Sean also nodded, answering the teacher. The guy concentrated on the sword, encouraging himself by the fact that he had trained many times in the virtual space. Although he told himself that everything would be fine, but it was still the first time he restored a magic weapon in reality. 
Thanks to Willem's efforts, the color of the sword began to change and this gave the guy to understand that the temperature was fine. And then the guy opened his palm. Willen immediately found out what was lying there, but still cautiously asked the student, and Sean smiled and said that these were the remains of a magic book. He cut a piece from it. Clutching his head, Willen did not know whether to scold his student for such a waste or to praise him for his bravery. The magic book is very valuable. How could he act so unwisely? The guy certainly had reasons to do so. Without a magic element, it is impossible to use the power of the mental spirit on a magic weapon. Placing the sword at the edge of the fire, he began to collect spiritual power himself, deciding that he would first pour the power of the mental spirit into the magic sword. When he did this, he immediately saw in the sword, a scheme that he had been training for days on end. Taking the sword back from the furnace with tongs, he put it in the anvil. Raising the hammer, he concentrated his spiritual power on it and thought that from that moment on, his future would change. With each knock of the hammer on the sword on the anvil, the guy imagined his future. He didn't want to stay here forever. He wanted to travel the world in his shiny armor. He wanted to find the tower and study further magic there. And in the end, he wanted to become the strongest magician. The guy, after a few knocks, picked up the sword with tongs and looked at it, looking for the part blocking the flow of magic. And looking with a spiritual eye at the diagram inside the sword, he soon found the damaged part. Clenching his fist and filling it with the mental power of the spirit, he decided that he was crawling his mind in order to follow the flow of the magic sword, and then he would use the mental power of the spirit. Having found the damaged part of the scheme, he added a pinch of spiritual power there, which, having poured into the destroyed structure, began to restore it. And when he finished everything, the guy sighed and said that everything was ready. Surprised, Scott and Willen approached him with an excited face and looked at the sword, asking if he had succeeded. Scott asked the guy if he had succeeded and he nodded with a smug smile. Scott opened his mouth wide in surprise, but Willen looked at the sword with a thoughtful look. The boy reached for the sword and it began to glow. Seeing this, the cattle and villain staggered back and the guy, raising the sword, organized the flared spiritual force into a calm stream that enveloped the blade of the sword. When he was done with everything, he held out his sword towards the knight and his master, saying that he was done. Raising the sword, the cattle looked with admiration at its brilliance. He couldn't help but praise the guy for such a work of art. Of course, it was a pity that he did not know how to use magic, and only owns an ordinary sword. Then the cattle handed the sword to a friend and asked what he thought. Willen carefully took the sword and told his friend not to mock him, because according to the artisan's standard, Sean is already very talented, and was even able to repair the magic sword. With a stingy male tear, Willen gave Sean a thumbs up, saying he did a great job. His technique made Willen remember his master, who had long since passed away, which made him feel emotional. Willen, still looking at the sword, asked if he could release magic. The guy nodded and handed one of the magic balls, saying that it should work if a magic core was inserted. When they inserted the blue core, the sword shone. Willen held it up, and the guy began to explain to the teacher that the owner of this magic sword can freely control it. When the energy of the magic core is sufficient, he can use the magic of the tip, the recovery time of which is about 30 seconds. The man shouted excitedly, and the ball gathered at the tip of the sword and shot forward. A ray of light pierced the wall of the forge and came out. Looking at the hole, Willen got into a stupor, but Scott was specifically shocked. His jaw almost fell off, and his eyes almost jumped out of their sockets. The guy, smiling broadly, asked the knight if he had passed. Scott barely recovered from the shock, grabbed the guy by the shoulders and exclaimed that of course the guy passed. No, he's just great. Thought suddenly hit Willen's head and he turned to the student, asked him if he could use magic, since he inserted a magic core into the sword. Smiling stupidly, the boy scratched his head and nodded. Scott, who was already tired of being surprised when he got close to Sean, said that since he had mastered magic, according to the rules of the country, he could join the magic tower of the country for training. And then he asked the guy, does he agree to this? The guy pretended to be surprised to pretend that he didn't know anything and asked what a magic tower was. Sighing contentedly, the knight proudly straightened up and said that although there are not many magicians in their country, there is an honorary five-star magician and five other magicians. Each of them has its own magic tower. Due to the fact that Sean is a citizen of the country, he has a chance to become a magician and get his magic tower to teach magic. This of course excited the guy. Placing his palm on the student's shoulder, Willen said that he did not expect that Sean was not only a genius in the craft, but also had a talent for magic. 
The guy bowed his head sadly and seeing this, Willen sat down next to him and grabbed his hands, said that he knew how hard the guy was doing and he was very proud of him. Regardless of what Sean chooses, Willen will respect whatever choice he makes. Scott, looking at the guy, advised him to think carefully and not be in a hurry. A craftsman or a magician whose profession is more respected and who has more of a future, he must take everything into account. Taking the magic sword from the teacher's hands, the guy nodded, saying that he would think it over well, and then he noticed the look of the cattle that was attached to the sword. Realizing what he wanted, the guy handed him the sword, asking if he wanted to try. The delighted cattle gladly took the sword and said that of course he wanted to. Proudly raising the sword up, the cattle laughed, then began to swing it, laughing loudly like some village boy. Seeing this behavior, Willen could not help but tease him. He laughed out loud and said that he did not think that the Lord had such a side of character. He was so funny. Coughing dryly, Scott said in embarrassment that there was no need to look at him like that. Then, looking at the guy, he told him to be ready to go with him in three days to the castle of Louis. Surprised that his dream started to come true so soon, the guy was in anticipation. The guy, smiling, said that then he needed to go home and tell his father about it. Scott nodded and said he could keep him company and meet his father. The guy thanked my lord for such courtesy, and after a while, Lord and Sean nailed a guy in a horse to the village. Of course, this was a great event for the villagers, especially Bond. Sean's father was surprised. Night Scott invited Sean's father along with Aunt Joey to his mansion to stay and it shocked the whole village. Sean and his father became the main topic of conversation for the villagers. Alice offered to show Night Scott and his talent for magic, and when she found out that the plan was successful, she was very happy for him. After a while, when he finally decided to leave with Mr. Scott, everyone from the forge saw him off. They couldn't accept that he would leave and the guy saw Willen crying for the first time. Of course, Ed was no exception and also saw him off with tears in his eyes. Master Willen, as a souvenir, gave Sean a hammer given to him by his master. But most likely, the guy will not use it in the near future. As a person who moved into this world, Sean considered himself an outsider here. But after being with everyone for so long, he could not accept that he was leaving them and he was really sad. While riding a horse, he saw the sunrise and, surprised by such beauty, smiled and promised himself that he would definitely become a magician. Three days later, a downpour poured down, which caused the knights to make a halt. Scott told everyone that they would stop here for the night, so the knights began to put up tents. Opening the tent for the boy, Scott asked how he felt about going out of town for the first time. The guy, entering the tent, complained that he was very tired. Handing the guy a stool, Scott, understanding his feelings, told him that they generally had to go five days, so there wasn't much left. The guy, seeing my lord's excitement, smiled and said that he could handle it. Nodding, Scott said that gradually Sean will adapt and get used to it. The guy sat down, seeing that Scott was not going to take off his iron armor, asked why he was not taking them off, wasn't he tired on the road? Slapping his chest with his fist, Scott said that he still had to patrol, and he had been wearing this armor for 20 years and was therefore used to it. After telling the guy to rest, he himself left the tent to go on patrol. The guy stopped him and thanked him for taking care and protecting him. As a sign of his gratitude, he raised his magic sword to Scott. Confused and at the same time fascinated by this picture, Scott quickly recovered and proudly said that he would not take the sword. It is his duty to protect his citizens, as well as to accompany him. This is a law established by the country, so it is his responsibility and duty to the whole strange. Then turning to the guy, he said with a serious face that this magic sword is very valuable. Only Sean himself can keep it. The guy smiled awkwardly to his former thoughts because he used to consider Knight Scott not reliable, which is why he wanted to check him out. But it seems Scott turned out to be an honest man, as a knight should be. The guy still insisted that Scott take the sword, explaining that he was a craftsman. As a craftsman, he can create magical weapons as well as restore. Moreover, he will not need a sword, because he wants to become a magician. His weapon will be a wand or a staff, in which case it will be wasteful to leave the sword gathering dust in any corner. Besides, is this sword more suitable for a brave knight like Scott than for him? Scott, not knowing what to answer, decided to take the sword anyway, telling the guy that he was too generous a child. Thanking the guy, the knight said that he would cherish him. Smiling, the guy told Scott, who was leaving, that after he mastered magic, he would like to introduce some magic into his armor. Smiling, Scott told him that he would go on patrol, and the guy should rest. The knight said he would inform others not to disturb the child. 
The guy nodded and thanked my lord for such generosity. The moon was surrounded by clouds, and the guy in his tent was immersed in virtual space and trained his spiritual energy by filling magic circles. While he was doing this, Alice excitedly turned to him and seeing that he asked her what had happened that she was panicking so much. The girl told him to wake up quickly, because she felt that there was someone outside the guy's tent and this one, someone clearly wanted to kill him. The guy quickly took off his glasses and took out a hammer from his bag, preparing for an attack. He frowned and decided to attack immediately while the enemy was not yet prepared. The one who entered the tent was a man in a black raincoat and he managed to block the guy's blow with an iron armband. Looking at the face of the enemy who clicked, the guy realized that he had never seen him before, then why did he attack? The enemy threw the guy back and accumulated a red aura in his hand and wanted to attack the guy. Seeing this, the guy began to think quickly about how to protect himself from a blow, and he remembered the gymnastics skills and immediately did a backflip. The enemy looked in surprise at the boy who escaped the blow, and the guy, landing immediately with a jerk, headed in his direction. Although Sean didn't know if this one was a spy or someone else, but he wasn't going to be exposed so easily. The enemy with a dagger in his hands used some kind of technique, which caused him to accelerate many times and find himself behind Sean's back, who was shaking with a hammer and immediately sent a dagger in his direction. The guy with a pale face instinctively turned around and took a step back so that he could dodge the dagger by only a centimeter. The guy just felt the aura of death pressing on him but the guy wasn't going to give up and die so easily. A bullet formula appeared in his head and, jumping back from another swing, he began to fill the scheme with spiritual energy and aiming with his index finger. He began to collect mana in front of him into a bullet and shot them directly into the killer's forehead, piercing his forehead. Sean himself, sighing, fell to the ground and watched as the killer fell to the ground with shock in his face. The feeling of death filled the guy, and he raised his trembling hands with shock, realized that he had just killed a man. Because of the sound, which spread across the canvas, Scott, hearing, ran into the guy's handkerchief, shouting what happened here. When he came in, he saw Sean bent over to the ground, and how he was throwing up and stomach juices were coming out on the rye. But it seems that after hearing him, Sean immediately pulls out a hammer and immediately swings it at Scott without looking in his direction. Scott easily grabs the hammer and seeing that it's bad for the guy to sit next to him. Scott, putting his hand on Sean's shoulder, began to calm him down, telling him not to worry. Sean, realizing who it was, looked at Scott with a dead look, and with a tremor in his voice said that he had killed someone. Patting the guy on the back, Scott says that he's here and now Sean won't have to worry about anything. But the guy doesn't seem to hear him and continues with a shiver that he didn't know why. But this guy snuck into his tent and wanted to kill him. He couldn't defeat him and used magic in a panic. Did he offend someone? Why did someone want to kill him? Suddenly the realization hit Scott's head and he regretfully said that he should apologize to the guy. This killer must have come to kill him, not Sean, and it looks like Scott guessed who sent him. With a grim face, Scott said that this killer most likely decided to kill him. With a regretful bow of his head, the knight said that it happened because he left the guy alone in his tent. The guy, having recovered a little, asked the lord why someone should kill him. Did the knight offend someone? Sighing, the lord said he didn't know if he should tell him about it, and then, having decided, the man looked up at Sean and told him that he had seen Scott's estate and territory, and then asked him if he thought it was big. The guy nodded and said that it was quite big. His father told him that if you add a neighboring farm to this territory, it can accommodate thousands of people. After opening the tent, Scott told the guy that it was better for them to go out and talk in the fresh air, and not stay next to the dead man. On leaving, Scott asked the boy if it didn't seem strange to him that he owned such a territory. He's a knight who doesn't even have any awards, how can he own such a large land? Then, looking up, the cattle admired the beautiful sky, the guy said that he hoped that the weather would be good in the morning. They sat down on a couch next to the tent and the lord, looking at the sky, the cattle falling into memories, said that 50 years ago, his land was just an abandoned plot of no value. It was impossible even to grow crops on such soil. At that time, his father was a brilliant knight, and he brought the family and the townspeople to this land. After his father's hard work, they finally founded their estate. The guy wondered how they managed to grow crops, if he had said not long ago that the soil was not capable of this. How his father achieved reclamation. Smiling sadly, Scott looked at Sean and said that he would answer his question. But for the sake of the knight's family, he had to keep it a secret. 
The guy nodded and the cattle looked at the sky again and said that it was thanks to magic. After these words, Sean became doubly curious and he concentrated on the knight's words. The same one continued with sadness in his voice. His father was a subordinate of Count Kembert. Then Count Kembert begged the great magician Tishoni to use magic to invent a method of farming to change the quality of the soil. The wizard agreed and at that time the count instructed Scott's father to try out this method on this earth. After 10 years of hard work by his father and his people, some achievements finally showed up. Surprised by this, the guy said that it looks like everything starts with the little things. His father had told him that they could now be considered a food storage facility for the entire Gong country. Smiling, Scott said that it looks like Sean's father takes care of the estate and therefore knows so much. It's not surprising that he managed to raise such a talented child. The guy smiled awkwardly, scratching his cheek, and thought to himself that his father had not taught him anything. Scott, looking at the stars, continued, saying that some people are jealous and slander against them. With concern, the guy asked if it was really someone from their country. Scott nodded regretfully, saying that it was the nobles they couldn't do anything to. They are very greedy and it looks like they have their eye on these lands and, although they will appropriate all the achievement to themselves, after many failures in the purchase of these lands, they seem to have begun to take more aggressive actions. Grinning, the guy thought to himself that most likely, they do not just want fame and achievement, but want to absorb these lands. Then the guy remembered about the count the knight was talking about and he wondered why he didn't ask for help from him. Turning around, he asked the knight about it, remembering that in their country the nobility of low rank is obliged to make offerings and pay taxes to the nobility of high rank, while the nobility of high rank is obliged to protect the nobility of low rank. The count, smiling with sadness, said that if Count Kembert were alive, he would not have to worry about this problem. Then the guy asked in surprise about the count's successor, unless after the death of the count himself, his successor did not take care of them. Scott, a little gloomy, said that Earl Kember taught the Duke of Warrington and therefore enjoyed the Duke's respect. But after his death, his son Earl Fraser was too weak and therefore he could not influence the Duke of Warrington's decision. The guy, frowning, understood the situation. Since Scott has lost the support of the Count, the nobility, occupying a higher position, attacks their own subordinates and robs the knights of their achievements. But others should not know about this, because if it becomes known that someone is trying to seize other people's lands, then the other nobility will quickly eliminate this upstart. Therefore, this upstart can only do it secretly. Scott, looking at the crescent moon, said that sometimes he thinks about hiding and living a normal life. But as the lord of the estate, he must protect not only his family, but also the families of the citizens of his territory. The guy tilted his head and asked the lord why he didn't just give the territories to these nobles. Clutching his face, Scott irritably said that this would not be enough for them. They want to know about the cultivation method. If the great magician Tishon finds out that his family gave his method to someone else, then he will definitely be killed. The guy, getting up from his seat, shouted energetically that everything was simple, which scared Scott. Sean waved his hand and said that after he went to the magic tower, he could just ask the great magician Tishoni to protect Scott. Touched, Scott incredulously asked if the guy would really do it and the guy, smiling, said that of course he would. Unless his enemy can afford to offend the great magician Tishoni, of course not. Scott also nodded, agreeing with the boy's arguments, saying that the magician Tishoni is one of the six great magicians of the country, few can oppose her with anything. Approaching the knight in a tight, the guy said with amusement that he also meant it. If the nobility does not want to help, then they just ask for help from the great magician Tishoni. If she becomes Lord's support, then it will definitely solve all Scott's problems. Scott looked at the confident guy with a trembling look, but then after thinking about it, he shook his head and looked at the ground. Why would a great magician care about some insignificant knight? The position of a magician in the country is much higher than a duke, so it is unlikely that she will even look in Scott's direction. Realizing what the Lord was thinking by his expression, the guy smiled and pointed at himself and said that he had learned magic on his own using a magic book that his master villain had given him. Isn't any magician interested in magic? Of course she will be interested in how the guy was able to comprehend that magic on his own in a short time. Tilting his head, Scott, with a puzzled expression on his face, asked why the guy was doing so much for him. Putting his finger to his lips and thinking, the guy said that he hadn't really thought about it, probably because Scott is a good person. That's why Sean wants to help him. Scott, deeply touched by Sean's intentions, grabbed him by the shoulders and said that Sean was really a good boy. No, he's just wonderful. While the Lord was crying, the guy awkwardly turned away and thought that he was actually doing this only for himself. 
The knight, standing up, took the handkerchief held out by Sean and said that it was really useless. He needed to use a little boy to get protection. Wasn't it a pity? The guy, smiling, said to Scott that it was not so important than to think about it. It would be better for him to wipe his tears. While the Lord was wiping his tears, the guy thought with a gloomy look that he really was doing it not only for the sake of the Lord, but also because all his close friends and the relatives are at Scott's estate. The guy didn't want them to become sacrificial weapons of war. While they were talking all this time, it was already dawn and Sean pointed it out to Scott. Scott, nodding, said that we should go and get ready and go on. It's been a week since the incident with the killer, in theory, Sean and the knights should already be close to Louis Castle. Now the guy was sitting in the carriage, but he was already sick of this motion sickness, so he wanted to reach the final destination as soon as possible. After entering the castle, he would, firstly, honor himself safer, and secondly, he would stop suffering so much on the road. The lord who was walking on the Lashadi ahead stopped and said that the castle was already visible. And looking from here, it was really possible to see the walls in the distance, behind which the city should be. Although it was called a castle, but it was big enough for hundreds of thousands of people to live there. When they began to enter the city through the bridge, the guy, approaching the lord, asked how many people live here and Scott, after thinking a little, said that two years ago there were about a hundred thousand residents here, now their number should have increased. The guy was very surprised by this astronomical figure, because it was just a castle. But smiling, Scott said that in fact it looked more like a city than a castle, but the dukes decided to name it after Louis, so they called Louis Castle. Since then, the city has expanded tenfold and there have never been restorations. Smiling awkwardly, the guy thought that then it was not surprising that they had headed here, and when he did not know about the city, he thought why would they go to the castle at all. While they were walking through the streets, the guy, like a real redneck, began to curiously inspect the surroundings, feeling the noise and din of the big city. It was so noisy and lively here that it somehow reminded the guy of his former noisy city. Of course, compared to the cities of former life, this is just a drop in the ocean, but this town was very well suited for peaceful life. Stopping in front of a tavern, the cattle got off the horse and said that they would stop here and then cheerfully opening the door, he called Butler, but, unfortunately for him, there were some unfamiliar men with the appearance of bandits in the bar. Seeing this, Scott fell into a stupor, but the tavern owner himself, who was wiping dishes, looked at him and recognized him. By the way, the owner of the tavern was a man of muscular build, but with a light belly. The man had short yellow army cut hair and a thick beard, and he seemed to be a very formidable man. Seeing an old acquaintance, Scott opened his arms wide, saying to a friend that they had not seen each other for a long time. But, but the gloomy man, it seems, was not very pleased with his friend and approaching him with a serious face, took a fighting pose and fiercely sent a blow towards Scott. The knight managed to dodge the blows and also take a fighting stance. Stand up, and then hit. Only his blow was blocked with a palm. Butler released his friend's fist, squeezed it as in arm wrestling, and with a kind smile said that it had been a long time since Scott had appeared in these parts. Although in appearance his friend has not changed, Scott also squeezed his hand contentedly, and looking at a friend who was two heads taller than him, said that three years had passed. Looking at these two as idiots, Sean rolled his eyes, saying that it looked like they were just fooling around. At this time Ed came into the tavern for him and greeted his uncle Butler with satisfaction. The surprised guy turned around and asked his colleague how he knew this man and Ed laughed and said that Uncle Butler was a friend of my lord and master villain and they had a good relationship. Scott cheerfully called his charges and introduced them to Butler, saying that this was his childhood friend. As a child they were together all the time, he was his best friend. Butler looked at Ed with a warm look and told him that he had grown up a lot, then asking if he had come to the artisan's test at the castle. Ed, smiling broadly, greeted Butler, and meanwhile Scott told Butler that Willen had taught a good student. This can be understood only by looking at his body and muscles. At this time, Butler saw Sean, who did not even reach his waist, and doubtfully asked Scott that he had taken his grandson with him. Sean, smiling, also greeted Butler, calling him uncle, and Scott began to introduce the guy to Butler. Scott said that Sean's son is one of the farmers on his territory and he has a talent for magic, and therefore Scott wanted the guy to enter one of the towers and study there. Bending down, Butler scratching his beard, asked about what and did this child really have a talent for magic. The guy, looking at this situation, thought that he looked like deja vu and did not believe him again. But, to his surprise, Butler, after studying him, laughed loudly saying that Scott even has an apprentice magician. And then he added that it was truly amazing, because there are really a lot of talented people in their estate. 
Then Butler opened his arms wide and told them to go to rest and leave the luggage to him, because it probably wasn't very convenient on the way, and they were tired. After everyone went to prepare the room, and Butler and Butler's men went to sort out Scott and his men's luggage. Scott and Butler sat down at one of the tavern tables. Then Butler got up and went to the bartender's counter and took one of the bottles from there, approached a friend and poured Scott a drink. While listening to him talk about how he was attacked, and Sean killed the killer. At the end, clenching his fist, Scott said that it looks like the patience of the nobles is running out. With a serious expression, Butler said that they had gone too far and asked about what happened after that whether there were any suspicious movements. Grinning, Scott took a sip of wine and said that nothing happened after that. It looks like the murder this time was their last warning about Scott himself. Raising the glass to his mouth, Butler asked Scott what he was going to do with it. If this continued, Butler was afraid that his friend would be destroyed. Clutching his forehead, Scott said that was why he was sending Sean to the Magic Tower. If Sean copes and becomes a magician's apprentice, maybe no one else will dare to mention Scott and his territory. After drinking a glass of wine, Butler put it on the table and looked at his friend, asked what would happen if the boy could not. Sighing, Scott said that all hope was in him, but then taking a menacing and serious look, he said that he had to protect his territory. This was their home, he would not let anyone destroy it. The next day was as clear as yesterday. In the dining room, Scott, Ed and Sean gathered in front of the table. While Scott and Ed were eating bread, the guy asked the Lord that they had already sent a letter to the Magic Association yesterday when they would answer them. After thinking for a while, Scott looked away and said that in three days, the magic tower would probably only receive a letter. Sighing, the guy, with a complaint, said that why is there such a slow delivery, if only he could call a tailwind. Not understanding, Scott looked at him, and Sean, not knowing what to say, just blamed everything on magic, saying that this is the kind of magic that can deliver items. At this time, the knight looked at Etta, who was diligently eating soup, turned to him, and he immediately stopped listening to the lore. Then Scott said that the artisan's test should be answered very quickly. In seven days, most likely the guy will have a chance to pass the exam. Ed nodded and thanked the Lord. After eating, they went outside and Ed, delighted with the variety of things and people here, said that it was too interesting. But, but Sean, looking around in a circle, thought that in a previous life he could not go outside for several years. At that moment, Ed saw a familiar picture, namely a street vendor sitting with a tent of household appliances and asked why there were still street vendors in Louis Castle. Smiling and proudly striding forward, Scott said that no matter what city they hit, there will always be street vendors, so there's nothing to be surprised about. You just need to be attentive and lucky and sometimes you can find something worthwhile with them. Admiring the night, Ed listened attentively to him. Walking along these streets, Scott began to tell his old days, and Ed began to admire him. But Sean looked at them as idiots and grinned to himself at Scott's naivety. The one who brought them here just to be nostalgic, but to listen to praise from Ed or something. At that moment, he was passing the counter of a street vendor and suddenly noticed a strange shine and looking at the merchant's things. He noticed a steel plate similar to the one that his master gave him. Sensing something unusual, he looked suspiciously at that piece of iron. Thinking that this was his chance, he immediately approached Scott, who was complacently talking about his past, and called him. He turned and looked at the cat. Eyed guy and asked what he wanted and Sean said he saw something he really needed. Could the Lord buy it for him? Smiling, the cattle said that, of course, he wanted to buy, and told him what he wanted, and the guy took him to a street vendor in simple clothes. The merchant looked at these gentlemen in surprise and seeing that the boy was reaching for his goods, told him that the kid wanted to buy, because toys are sold on another street. The guy with shining eyes looked at the merchant and asked what it was, and the merchant looked to the side and saw that the guy accompanying him dressed in expensive armor immediately shamelessly exclaimed that he had found this thing when he was exploring the ruins. And then leaning over to him, he said that he got it after a lot of effort, it was hard work. Seeing the pretense of this swindler, the lord asked him how much he would give it for, and the merchant, raising one finger, said that one gold coin would be enough. Just one gold coin and they will be able to take all the treasures. Enraged, the knight grabbed the merchant by the collar and pulled him to him with a menacing and frightening look looking at him, asked how much he said. How this scammer can fool a child. He has a conscience at all. Five silver coins or they won't buy anything. There are plenty of such trinkets in this market anyway. In a panic, the merchant immediately sold everything for five silver and that's how the guy got all the merchant's things and with them what he needed. Ed looked indignantly at Sean's rather humming tune and asked him why he wanted to buy these things, because they were deceived. 
They were not worth five silver pieces. Looking at the sky with pity, Ed said that they earned five silver coins in the forge for a month, and he forced the Lord to spend such a lot of money. After coughing dryly, the cattle said it wasn't much, so it was fine. Then, smiling, Sean turned to Ed and asked if he could guess what exactly the guy wanted to buy from all this pile. After scratching his head, Ed thought for a while and pointed to the book. Sean shook his head and said that this book was not worth it. Then Ed pointed to the plate next to the book and said maybe it was, but then doubtfully said that. But it doesn't look like a fragment of a strong weapon, it just has good quality, but in the end it's just iron. Then, sighing, Ed told him to stop making him guess. After looking around, the guy Sean told them to get closer, there should be no one nearby. And then he told them in their ear, and surprised Ed wanted to scream, but his mouth was immediately closed. Realizing that he had made a mistake, Ed apologized for saying so loudly. Sean waved off and said that everything was better, he should go to the hostel faster. And when they came, Ed raised one eyebrow at the two plates and asked that this was all he wanted. And Sean nodded and picked up two iron plates and said that they were magic iron plates. Looking at them doubtfully, Ed asked the guy if he was sure they were magical. Scott, taking one plate, examined it and said that it looked like they had some kind of pattern. The remaining plate was picked up by the guy himself and said that he was absolutely sure that there was definitely some magical information in them. As for information, he wanted to try to explore it. Looking at the guy with admiration, Scott said that he was too amazing. Ed asked Scott with interest how much these magical iron plates cost, and he grinned and said that everything related to magic is hard to buy for money. If someone wants to sell them to the magic tower, each one can be sold for at least 100 gold coins. A shocked Ed with eyes turned to gold, a coin with admiration, looked at Sean. After driving him away, Scott told him to prepare for the exam then to envy and interfere with the guy, and he himself slammed the door behind him. When those two came out, Sean looked at the plates, shook his head due to the fact that they were compared to 100 gold coins. Most likely, their cost is much more than this amount. He felt a bit of magical power in them. He was wondering what kind of information was there. Maybe there was some kind of mental training method contained there. Well, there anyway, he should try to use the mental power of the spirit on him. When the guy concentrated on the plate and wanted to pour some spiritual energy into him, his heart contracted, which is why he instinctively threw the plate and, all pale and trembling, almost fell unconscious. He held onto the table and still felt his heart constricting, which caused severe pain to drown his brain. Falling to the floor, he got to the bed and leaned on it breathing deeply. He had an incredibly bad feeling. His head was splitting, and his heart seemed to be torn apart. He reached for the box to quickly enter the virtual space and ask Alice about it. As soon as he got into the virtual space, Alice, in a panic, created a bed on which she laid the guy. And then, starting to check his condition, she said that she would help him now. Sean's body was heating up, his breathing was very rapid, and his heart was bursting. It seems that this time he was too hasty, leaning over to the pale guy. The unhappy girl said that before using the mental power of the spirit, he had to give it to her to analyze what they consist of and whether they are dangerous at all. Feeling incredibly tired, the guy hardly reported that just now, when he tried to use the mental power of the spirit to touch the magic plates, he felt a sensation as if he was being sucked into the plate itself. All of his mental strength was sucked into that plate. Chuckling, the girl said that the guy overestimated himself. What happened now was the effect of a lack of mental fortitude. Any mistake and the guy could have died. While Alice was saying this, the guy was already coming to his senses and when he heard about the death, he was horrified imagining how he would have died from such stupidity. The girl, raising her index finger, decided to explain to the stupid owner by simplifying everything as much as possible. The mental power of the spirit is the magical power of this world. You can even say that it is the soul of the owner. If all of his mental spirit power is sucked out, it's as if his soul is sucked out. He'll just become a zombie without the ability to think. The girl didn't really know. In this case, the person would be considered alive or not. Fortunately, the guy reacted quickly, and everything went well. With regret and a bit of fear, the guy asked when he would be able to study these two iron plates and the girl who summoned them already in virtual space said that something high level seemed to be written on these plates. With his current mental strength of spirit, he could not even understand the contents. If he continues to develop as well, then he will need about another 10 years to study them. The guy fell into despondency from what he heard, and the girl, smiling, patted him on the back and told him not to worry. Because time is relative, it will run 
and he will not notice. The guy nodded, cheered up a little, and then turned to the girl and asked her about the case with the killer. Then, when he attacked him, she informed him that she felt a murderous intent. Nodding, the girl said that this is the ability of the information storage. The guy, hearing this, asked in perplexity about whether the data of the girl's information repository had not been destroyed. The girl, looking at the guy like a fool, rolled her eyes and sighed and said that the basic information was destroyed, but remained on purpose. The guy wanted to ask what kind of information it was, but the girl told him that he wouldn't understand anyway, so it's useless for him to ask about it. But the guy was still curious, but the girl didn't care, but he was interested in why the guy asked her about it. The guy, scratching his head, said that he wanted to learn to feel the intention of murder. The guy, hearing the question, looked at the girl and told her that he wanted to learn how to feel the intention of murder, whether she could help him with this. Alice did not like it at all, and she frowned, seeing that the guy asked why she was silent, and she asked in response why he wanted to learn to feel the intentions of murder. The guy looked down with a feeling of sadness and apprehension and remembered that moment with the killers. Ever since he had encountered him, he had felt that he was defenseless. Although inside the virtual space, whatever happens, he will not die. But in reality it is not so, and he completely forgot about it. In the real world, he is still an ordinary person and it is easy to lose him. Last time, if she hadn't told him about the killer, he would have just died without knowing how it happened. Therefore, he cannot rely on the fact that the girl will warn him all the time. For the sake of his safety, he must learn to sense the intent of murder. Putting her hand on her face, the girl said that he wanted it himself, so then he shouldn't blame her. The guy nodded to her, and the girl called the door and told him to go and experience it first. Before the guy entered, the girl also called a lamp with a candle inside and gave it to the guy. The guy, taking the lamp, went to the door and pushing it, asked the girl what was behind it. The girl said that how he would go there then and find out. The guy went through the door and found himself in utter darkness. He didn't see anything no matter how much he looked around. Because of the darkness, his other senses sharpened, and he heard a step, which immediately turned around, asking who was there. But of course there was no answer. Sean looked in the direction of the sound, but he could see nothing but darkness. A little scared, he thought about what kind of place it was, and then hearing the sound, he felt a chill on his back, and immediately realized what was the matter. While the guy was not behind him there was a huge man in a mask and with an axe, and he swung the axe towards the guy. The frightened guy jumped sharply away from the man and screamed at the top of his voice. Landing, he clenched his teeth and told the man that how dare he attack him from behind and putting his index finger and thumb in the form of a pistol. He immediately exclaimed the bullet spell, but realized with shock that he could not use magic here. Trembling, he turned and ran away, and the masked man began to chase him. Thanks to the lamp, he saw a house ahead and ran into it immediately closing the doors. Going inside, he realized that this was just a temporary measure against that guy. Most likely, he will get to him soon, to be honest, Sean was scared to hell of it. Then shaking off his head, he hoped that he would find anything in this house that he could use as a weapon. Soon he found a table on which there was a plaster head with black hair and a glove with huge claws. At this moment, the TV suddenly rustled and turned on by itself. It was a TV from the 80s and a clown appeared on the screen. No, it was someone with fiery red hair and a huge white mask. His whites were black and his pupils were red. After a while, the TV started talking, greeting him, and then saying that he wanted to play. At that moment, the sound of someone's footsteps sounded from behind and the guy, scared to shit, immediately turned towards the door asking what this time and then a split appeared in the door, from which an axe blade protruded. In fear, the guy jumped back and heard a creepy voice outside the door telling him that the guy had been found. Of course, this scared him almost to the point of losing his pulse. The guy started to come to his senses and heard Alice's voice asking him if he was okay. The guy was half asleep and thought about what had happened and what was going on in general. And then the girl, putting her hand on her forehead, said that he told her that he wanted to learn to feel the intent of murder, so she sent him to the training room. After Alice's words, the guy remembered and almost fainted again from fright. The girl looked at him with excitement and asked what happened there. Sean's ability to sense killing intent has improved or not. The guy, pale from fright, trembling, said that he did not know. And in general, he started the thread, saying that why should he feel this in order to train to feel murder intentions. The girl raised her finger up and cleverly said that if he wanted to feel the murder intent and the hidden hostility of another person, then he must feel them in a terrible and dangerous environment. Still not fully recovering. The guy asked if this was the only way, the girl nodded with a smile. 
more than 100 billion reports show the same result. When a person experiences a scene of fright, he has a strong feeling drooping, and he begins to understand when danger is approaching. Feeling fear and unwillingness to return to that room, the guy asked that he would not suffer because of this training. The girl shook her head and said that in her data, all federal level servicemen, before joining the army, should experience something similar, and there is not a single death message in any of them. The surprised guy jumped up and asked what federal level the girl was talking about, and how many of them there were at all. The girl, smiling, said that the federal servicemen were from the Milky Way galaxy, but the general data had been destroyed and he didn't know anything more about them. Sighing, the guy said that it was fine. And then getting up, he said that he would go and practice a little more. The girl anxiously asked him if it was worth it, maybe he would rest a little more. Shaking his head, the guy opened the door again and said that everything was fine. He needed to forge iron while it was hot. He felt that the sooner he learned this skill, the sooner he would be able to guarantee his safety. The girl wanted to stop him, but he, without listening to her, said that he went. Then, when the guy came into the room, stroking the girl's chin, she said that although there really were no victims, but more than half were going crazy. Well, if she wasn't asked, then it's not her fault that she didn't report. And then the sounds of agony and screams of fear began to be heard from behind the door. Five days later, the letter finally came to Scott and he happily went to Sean's room, who was on the second floor and knocked on his door calling the guy and saying that the magic tower had answered them. When the guy didn't answer, Scott said he was coming in and opened the door and entered the room. He saw how the guy was sleeping wrapped in a blanket and sighing. He touched his shoulder as the guy immediately jumped up and throwing the blanket took a shooting pose and activating a spell asking who touched him and that he did not move. Scared shitless by such a reaction, the knight immediately raised his hands and shouted that it was him and asked not to decrease it. The guy, seeing the knight back deactivated the spell and asked for an apology with surprise, justifying that he thought it was someone else. Clutching his heart, the knight sighed with difficulty saying that the guy scared him. The guy was surprised by his reaction, because he didn't think that with his current ability to sense murder intent, he could sense if someone just approached him when he was sleeping. After catching his breath, Scott remembered why he was there and cheerfully picked up the letter and shouted that he should forget about this incident, and concentrate better on the news that Scott brought him. The guy, seeing the letter, took it with brilliance and excitement. Scott, seeing the guy's joy, smiled and said that there was a magician who was ready to test the guy's magical talent. The guy excitedly asked when they were leaving and the man replied that right now. After a while, they both sat on a maroon horse and walked towards the magic tower. During the campaign, Sean asked the Lord why the magic tower was built outside the city and Scott laughed and said that it was a separate cast of people. They naturally want to find a place where they can safely study magic. Then Scott raised his finger and pointed ahead saying they would be there soon. In front of them, right in the middle of the field, there was a huge magic tower reaching to the heavens. Next to her were several more towers half as tall as him, and around the towers flew three flying beasts similar to dragons. Looking at this majestic building, Sean admiringly said that the magic tower is really big. It's not surprising that it was built outside the city. Scott nodded and said that such a distance between the city and the magic tower is not so much for magicians. Even if the city is attacked by the enemy, they can just teleport anything there. In addition, to prevent a magical experiment affecting the city. Admiring the tower like that, they reached its gate and were met by a man with brown hair in a white robe with a purple flower pattern. After saying hello, Scott helped Sean down from the horse, and then he began to descend. Looking at the boy, the magician with a completely indifferent face asked him that he was Sean. Sean, excited in anticipation, nodded and said hello, saying that it was nice to meet him, at the same time seeing with his spiritual eye that this person has an energy wave around, although it was a little dim, but Sean had never seen such a wave before. Scott, bowing, told the magician in the robe that he would leave the boy in their care and thank them for their understanding. The magician, raising his hand, with the same indifferent face, said that of course they would take care of the guy, and Sean turned bowed and thanked Scott. The man sat back on the saddle and told the guy to take care of himself and wished him success in the exam, and then turned around and raised his hand and said goodbye. Sean and the magician also raised their hands in a petition, and then the magician with the same cold indifference asked the guy if they could already go. The magician's question took the guy by surprise, and he nodded and turned around and they went deep into the tower. The indifferent magician warned the guy to follow him, because his teacher was waiting for them. As they walked, the guy excitedly thought that he was finally entering the magic tower. Only when he entered the building he saw that even his hall was huge, which surprised the guy. 
In the hall in the corner there was a staircase twisted and going up behind the wall, where the magician and Sean went. In the hall itself there was a round table and chairs around them, as well as a flag, which seemed to depict the emblem of the tower. Climbing up the tower, the guy looked at the magician accompanying him and decided not to raise his voice next to him, because it seemed to him that he did not like to talk, because he did not utter a word all the way. Maybe in the society of magicians it is customary to be such. After the guy and the magician went up to the second floor, Sean noticed a lot of small rooms here, and magic waves emanated from each of the rooms. Some of the magic powers were even stronger than the guy who accompanied him. Looking around curiously, they reached the fifth floor where the magician stopped. Then, looking at the big brown door, he went up to it and knocked on the inside. A voice was heard allowing them to enter. Curiosity, excitement, anticipation and a few dozen other words could describe Sean's condition. And he couldn't wait to meet this magician outside the door. The door opened, and an indifferent magician said that he had brought a guy to the teacher. Entering the room, the first thing that caught the guy's eye was that it was huge, then a large window directly opposite the entrance. He said, pointing to the red-haired magician, saying that this was his examiner for the upcoming exam. And the owner of this magic tower, one of the magicians of their country, the magician Mo Lung. Magician Mo Long turned around, looked at the young man and Sean finally saw the stranger's face. The magician, as he saw from the back, had red hair combed back and reaching to the neck, as well as a thick red beard running from the sides to the chin. Unlike Scott, this man didn't have a mustache, he rather looked like Butler. The mantle, you can't call it anything else, sat on him very majestically. Although it was white, it had a purple hue, and the flower patterns were sewn with white thread. On the magician's belt, something similar to a purple, colored magic stone was instructed. After examining the room and turning the magician, a huge amount of magical power that surrounded this majestic magician immediately fell into the guy's eyes. There was such a strong pressure coming from the magician that the guy swallowed already, thinking about what a true magician is, not what he imagined of course. The magician looked down at the boy with the same indifferent face as his pupil and asked him that he was Sean. Recoiling and taking a step back, the guy swallowed again and nodded. Tension flew between them and noticing this, the magician sighed and turned around and said that the guy certainly had magical talent, but unfortunately, his talent was the lowest rank among all the magician's students. Even if he trains hard, he won't be able to become an official magician. From such a cold treatment, the guy already turned pale. But turning around and approaching the window, the man did not even want to look at him and continued saying that even though the guy's talent was not high. But since few people have magic talent, if the guy has a desire, he can stay in the outer forest of the magic tower, do the work around the house, learn some methods of training fortitude and slowly develop. From the words of the magician, the guy was getting worse and worse, but he did not stop, continuing to speak like a realist. He went on to describe the future that awaits the guy, saying that when he becomes an adult, he will be able to comprehend beginner magic, and this will be enough to earn a living. These words certainly did not please, but led the guy to despair, and his initially straight posture sank more and more with each next word of the magician. And when the magician finished, he said in disbelief that this could not be. Closing his eyes, the guy thought to himself in annoyance that this magician was too cold. Why would he say such things even though this is only their first meeting? How can he judge him by just one look? Sitting down on the table, he looked at Sean's form and asked him who wrote his information. Sean, still a little pale, said it was written by Knight Scott. The magician, hearing the word knight, slapped the form on the table and exclaimed irritably that the virtue of a knight is honesty. How can he lie like that? Not understanding what was the matter, the guy asked the sighing magician, who began to tread on the chair what Scott had written. The magician, shaking his head negatively, said that he had written that the guy had already comprehended magic. Wasn't it nonsense how with such a weak mental spirit power, Sean could comprehend magic? Listening to such an insult towards his benefactor, Sean could not remain calm and smiling maliciously. He began to use pool magic and said that Knight Scott was not lying. Looking at how the guy forms a spell, the man frowned and said that, judging by his actions, the guy really can use magic. The guy nodded and said that he had mastered only one spell perfectly, which by the way he just showed. Frowning even more, the man asked him what he meant by that, did he really know any other spell? The guy nodded, but said that he hadn't really mastered it yet, and then remembered how Alice showed him how to analyze an acid spell, but he never started practicing it. Most of the time the guy spent on mastering the skill to sense the intent of murder. The magician, standing up, approached the guy and seeing his spell said that it seemed to be wind magic. Smiling to himself, the guy happily thought that it seemed that the magician Mo Lung was interested in him, and therefore, smiling smugly, 
He said that he had studied wind magic called Magic Pool. Opening his hands as a target, the magician Mo Long with an emotionless face asked him to use his magic on him and shocked. The guy asked him what to use it on him and when the magician nodded, the guy remembered how the bullet pierced the skull of that killer making a hole in it and said with fear, the magician that the power of this a shot can cripple a magician. Realizing the feeling of the guy, the magician moved away and pointed to his desk, telling him to use magic on it. The guy, bowing 90 degrees, said that he would start. Chuckling, the magician told him to start, to look hot at the power of his spell. And then, smiling for the first time, the magician nodded to himself, informing himself in advance that the table was made of solid wood. And he even added a magical reinforcement in it, so that it is very strong, and it is unlikely that the magic of the guy will be able to touch it. While the magician was praising his hundred, the magic of the guy shot straight into his praise table with incredible force, and the magician even recoiled in shock, and after bending down he saw a through hole in the table. In shock, his eyes turned to the guy and he said that it was probably weak. When he came to himself, the magician remembered his dignity and coughed dryly, told the guy that his bullet magic has destructive power, but it shouldn't be so strong, shouldn't it? Smiling, the guy cautiously asked that he had done something wrong thinking at the same time that he could not tell that magic had been changed by artificial intelligence. Shaking his head, the magician said that his spell was just very different from those like him. He had a more powerful force. Then, saying that in general, it's not bad, the magician asked him where he learned it and the guy handed him the magic plates, saying that his master was a craftsman and he said that these plates are a magic book. Unbelieving, the man looked at the plates and asked the guy if he himself had learned what was written in the book and the guy nodded. Then the magician, squinting, with a cold face, said that he was lying. Surprised, Sean did not understand why the atmosphere changed so much in a second, and indignantly asked why the magician was saying that. Because he was not lying. But at the same time, the guy felt a strong panic, because, in fact, Alice studied these plates and only then explained to him. The magician said that he did not feel in this book of records that it did not contain the pool magic that he had just shown. Awkwardly, the guy asked that this thing was called a record book, and then said that the magician had figured it out. There was a slightly different spell in the book, but the guy changed it to bullet mania. The magician looked at the guy in disbelief and he quickly nodded several times, and then began to hang noodles on the magician's ears, but at the same time telling half the story without saying anything about Alice and the virtual space. Sighing, the magician asked that he had used the record book to repair the magic weapon. Not understanding why the magician sighs so much, the guy said that he had fully studied this book, which is why he used it to fix it. The magician fell into a stupor. This guy's words were so well-founded that he couldn't even object. Seeing that the magician was behaving strangely, the guy awkwardly scratched his head and asked if he had done something wrong after all. Raising his hand, the magician waved it away and denied it, saying that he had not said anything like that. It was just that Mo Lung did not expect that at such a young age the guy would have such courage. And then the man asked him if he could use the spell again. Scratching the back of his head, the guy said that, unfortunately, he would not be able to. His mental spirit power allows him to release magic only once. The wizard, smiling, said that he knew this, the strength of the guy's spirit is so small that it is not able to comprehend the training of magic how in general the guy managed to learn magic. Squinting, the magician looked at him with disbelief, saying that his magic release skill was honed almost to perfection, as if he had trained tens of thousands of times. Hearing this, the guy realized that his secret was under threat. The magician looked at him with disbelief, saying that his magic release skill was honed almost to perfection, as if he had trained tens of thousands of times. Hearing this, the guy realized that his secret was under threat. The magician didn't end there, continuing his explanation. Every time a person wants to release magic, he must imagine in his brain and use the magical power of the spirit to create an image of magic and direct the flow of energy into it. And every time a person does this, whether it is success or failure, he must use the power of the mental spirit to create magic. In such a situation, if a magician wants to master magic, the power of the mental spirit that he possesses must be greater than it takes to release magic 10 or even a hundred times. The magic of the bullet that the guy used seems to have formed instantly. It's not just training a dozen times. According to the level of his mental spirit strength, the amount of time a guy needs to reach this skill level is several years, and maybe more. The magician looked the guy straight in the eyes, because of which he turned pale and looked away. Seeing that Sean could not tell what he had done to achieve this, the magician sighed and said that since he did not want to tell, then it was not worth doing it. No matter what, Mo Long has seen his abilities, so he can stay here.
paling. The guy nodded, thinking that he already wanted to come up with an excuse and lie to him. But really this magician will not ask him about it anymore. The wizard, looking out of the window, said that he had just thought that he wanted to take Sean as an apprentice, whether he agreed to it. The guy, of course, doubted, and the magician asked what he didn't want. But realizing that there was no need to hesitate, Sean immediately excitedly agreed and said that he was ready for one thing and thanked the magician. Nodding, the red-haired magician said that now Sean is officially a magician's disciple. The magician hoped that he would be able to surprise him in the future. With shining eyes, the guy said that he will definitely do it. Then the magician called Danny, that indifferent and emotionless magician, and ordered him to take Sean to the seventh floor and then announced that from now on he was his disciple. The magician, bowing, nodded, and then calling Sean left the office, and they began to climb the stairs further. Looking at this guy, the guy thought that after he became a magician's apprentice, this Danny became more polite. Soon they reached the right place, and Danny led the guy to the door and informed him that this room was still empty. Would Sean mind staying here? Sean of course nodded and went into the room which did not stand out in any particular way. Donnie pointed to the room and said that from that day on, Mr. Sean would stay here, and if he needed something, he could ring the bell and they would definitely help him. It doesn't matter if it's a meal, a shower or any clothes to his liking. He can order or tell them, and they will definitely cook it for him. The guy thanked Mr. Danny, who smiled for the first time, only awkwardly, bowing, said that Sean could just call him Danny. He's just an assistant that Mr. Mo Long allowed to stay here and study. Surprised by this statement, the guy said that he thought that besides the magician, everyone in the tower was a student of magicians, and he was a student assistant. Danny, still smiling awkwardly, said that there was a distribution by levels. In the tower, members are divided into three types. A magician, a magician's apprentice and a magician's assistant. And then Danny said that before the guy came, there were only five mage students in Mo Long's tower and they all had extremely high magical talent, so Mo Long recognized them and took them as his disciples. Over time, they will have the opportunity to become the official magicians that people admire so much, and people like him were simply chosen by magician Mo Long as assistants. Although assistants have magical talent, their talent is usually not high, which is why they have become assistants that official magicians do not pay attention to. The assistants had two ways. The first of them is to give up studying magic and try yourself in another profession. But the other option is to stay and study magic in your free time. Although a lot of people gave up, but most still retained a little hope, wanting to try in their lives whether they could master magic and become official magicians. Of course, there are very few assistants who fulfill their desire. With a drooping head, Danny said that the assistants live in the forest surrounding the magic tower. Of course, there is little first-level magic and basic techniques for cultivating the power of mental spirit in the forest. After thinking about what was said, the guy nodded and said that then it was not surprising that at the very beginning the magician Mo Lung offered him to live in the forest. Danny, looking at the guy, nodded and continued, talking about the fate of the assistants. Almost all of them can't put up with failure when moving to the seventh assistant level, after they comprehend a magic spell of the first level or maybe even one or two magic spells of the second level, they leave the forest. But despite this, the one who has reached the second level spell in the eyes of the common people is also a magician who has freedom and is in fact at the level of a magician's disciple, and thus they can try their luck. Whether in the army or going into mercenaries, even becoming adventurers, they will also be very popular and respected. After finishing his explanation, Danny congratulated Sean on the fact that he is now the sixth apprentice magician in the Magic Tower which means that he can hire people as assistants. Then the guy became interested in what the assistants of magicians students do in general, and he asked Danny about it. He kindly began to say that they would serve him and help him with his daily chores. They can also help him prepare some simple magical materials, in fact, assistants are just servants. Hearing this, the guy smiled awkwardly, scratching his head. Then Danny asked the guy if he wanted to hire assistants and if he had any friends he wanted to hire, because according to his authority, he could hire two assistants. Surprised by this, the guy thought that it looked like he could hire assistants among acquaintances. Danny, smiling, asked the guy if he wanted to hire assistants and if he had any friends he wanted to hire, because according to his authority, he could hire two assistants. Surprised by this, the guy asked Danny to give him time to think while he didn't know who to choose, and then he said that someday he would find it. Danny, smiling, nodded and left the room, finally hearing words of gratitude from Sean. When Danny left, the guy sprawled on the bed and breathed a sigh of relief that he finally got into the magic tower and even became an apprentice. Looking at the window next to the table, 
He thought that even in the world of magicians there is a lot of injustice. At this time, the magician Ma Lung was looking for something among his books with the help of some artifact and soon found what he was looking for and it turned out to be some kind of symbol. Channeling his spiritual power here, the magician found himself in another room, where he was immediately greeted by people in black robes and Mo Long nodded to each of them. Then, going to the center of the room, he shouted to Da Wai that he had come. A voice came from the second floor telling him that he was doing research, so magician Mo Long should wait for him for a while. Sighing, Mo Long called Da Wai a manic researcher and shook his head. Then he decided not to wait. He activated a purple magic circle under him and said that since he himself did not want to go down, then Mo Lung himself would go to him and soared into the sky. In the sky, he created these magic circles and jumped on them, rising higher and higher, and finally reaching the desired floor. He landed next to the room, from which he heard again, saying that he was coming. The man was dressed in the blue robe of magicians and had a goatee. Mo Long, looking at him, said sarcastically that, and he came out on time. Da Wai smiled and told Mo Long to drop his sarcasm and invite him to sit at the tables with a cup of tea. After pouring Tom tea with milk, he said that Hammerson had sent him. Mo Long, seeing this, took a sip and said that he envied him, because he had a servant who always sent him good things. Putting a cup of tea on the table, the man smiled and looking at Mo Moon asked what he was worried about. Hearing this, Mo Long spat out the tea in shock and irritably asked Da Wai how he understood about it. Smiling like a kind uncle, he said that it could be easier to read into the expression of the magician's face. Sighing, the magician said that he had accepted a student today, and added that his talent was very bad. He had never seen a worse magical talent. Surprised by this statement, Da Wai, without understanding, asked that if the guy has such a bad talent, but he still took him as a student, then this is his relative. And then, scratching his beard, he sighed and said that Mo Lung was an orphan, which made him furious. Mortified, Mo Lung looked seriously at Da Wai and said that it was enough to joke. He took him in, because even despite such a surprisingly bad talent, the guy used an altered magic spell in front of him. Surprised by this, Da Wai asked what spell Mo Lung was talking about, and he said that it was a cut spell, recalling that wonderful case. Then he went on to say that the guy called his spell bullet magic, and it had a much more powerful force. The most interesting thing is that after his spell ends, it breaks. Surprised by this, Da Wai asked where he learned it from, and Mo Lung said in response that he learned it from a magic book, and he is also self-taught. Da Wai said it wasn't bad and asked where the book was, and Mo Long said that. Unfortunately, he was a craftsman before that and used it to repair magic weapons. Da Wai also nodded, saying that it was really a pity. Then slamming his fist on the table, Mo Long said, The most important thing is that the magic power of that child is only enough to cast a magic spell just once, but despite this, he was able to use it instantly. Shocked, Da Wai looked at his friend in disbelief and understanding the feeling of a friend. Mo Long nodded, saying that if he had not witnessed it himself, he would not have believed it either. A ten-year-old child with poor magical talent could comprehend magic at such a high level. After taking another sip of tea, Da Wai nodded and said that he seemed to understand why Mo Lung came here, but then he asked his friend if he really allowed him to study that magic. After hearing the story of Da Wai's friend, he asked Mo Long that he really thought it was possible to let this student study that magic. Mo Lung was silent for a second, but after taking a sip of tea, he said that with his talent, he was the most suitable option. Da Wai, looking at his friend with a serious face, said that he should think carefully. If he could not become a real magician, studying this type of magic would not help him. Sighing, the magician said that he would discuss it with Sean himself, anyway the decision remains with him. At the same time, Sean was lying on the bed in his room. The guy stared thoughtfully at the ceiling. Should he tell Scott that he has become a disciple of the magician Mo Lung? Or has he already been informed about it? Suddenly, at this time, some noise was heard, and then a voice told him to quickly go to the ninth floor. Getting up from fright, he nodded and immediately left the room and began to climb the stairs. When he reached the teacher's room, he said that he had come. Mo Lung told Tom to come in and the guy came in and saw Da Wai. Mo Long, of course, introduced the magician to his disciple, saying that this was his friend the three-star magician, Da Wai. Sean bowed and said that he was pleased to meet Mr. Da Wai. After greeting the guy, the magician, smiling, said that he did not know that Sean was so young. 
and then he said that he had heard from Mo Long that he had already mastered a magic spell. The guy nodded and Da Wai asked him to demonstrate the spell to him. Sean immediately looked at his teacher and he nodded and told him to just do it. Agreeing, the guy took aim and began to form a bullet and shot them into the table, leaving a through hole in it. Looking at this, Da Wai smiled, said that it was very good, and then asked if he knew any other magic spell. The guy, embarrassed by the praise, scratched his head and said that he still knew the acid spell, but he had never used it before, so he was unlikely to be able to use it. Da Wai kindly smiled and said that it was amazing. The guy's magic power is only enough for one spell, but there are very few people who can reach this level with such magic power. Frowning, Mo Long asked what Da Wai was talking about. Sean is the one and only one. Da Wai nodded, but Mo Long realized that he had over, praised the student, coughed dryly, and told Tom not to be impudent because of this. The guy nodded and thanked the teacher for the recognition. The magician looked at Sean as a son and said that since he became his disciple, they have become a family. In fact, this guy's basic talent is very bad. He is almost unable to release magic power. Putting his hand on the student's shoulder, he said that the guy would be ready for many difficulties that would reach him in the future when he would study magic and use magic spells. Proudly raising his head and clenching his fists, the guy said that he was not afraid of difficulties and hearing this Mo Lung laughed loudly, pleased with the student's answer. But then again assuming a menacing look, he looked at Sean and said that there are many types of magic spells and asked him what type he planned to focus on. The guy awkwardly bowed his head and said that he was not very well versed in magic, so he asked the teacher to tell him what to do. Mo Long scratched his beard and said that the guy's magical talent is ordinary, but it looks like he has an excellent perception ability and affinity. This is his unique talent, so to speak. That is why he can easily comprehend magic, even when his magic power is less than necessary and he is very lucky with this. The teacher recommended that we take this as the basis of his type. Under the guidance of two teachers, Sean finally understood some things related to magic. For example, the power of magic spells increases and decreases depending on the magic power used, and it is distributed over 10 levels. The higher the level, the more powerful the spell. And yet, there is a difference even between one level of the spell. Even if it's the same level of magic, it's different in terms of releasing power. In most cases, the difference in low-level magic is not visible. But after increasing the level of magic power, the gap will gradually increase and may be strikingly different. For example at level 5. If we talk about the 10th level, the differences will be enormous. High-level magic can consume more magic power, but be weaker than medium-level magic. But this is a very rare case. In fact, high-level magic power is not something that medium-level magic power can compare to. According to the thoughts of the magician Mo, Moon, he should choose the magic spell that consumes less magic power. It suits him and is better for his future development. However, he himself thought that he really didn't have any special learning abilities. If it wasn't for Alice and the virtual space, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to practice more than a few million times. Sadly thinking about it, he still decided not to think about it and do as the teacher said. Turning to Tom, he asked him what type of magic he thought would suit him best. Looking at the guy for a second, the magician said that he had discussed this with Da Wai, and they decided to recommend him to study the element summoning. The guy looked at the teacher waiting for the continuation and he, seeing this expectation, decided not to torment the student. Smiling, he said that among all types of magic, the power of summoning an element is very strong and its consumption of magical energy is the lowest. Of course, this imbalance surprised the guy and therefore he asked a completely logical question. If everything is so great, wouldn't everyone choose this kind of magic to study? Looking thoughtful, Mo Long said that this type of magic also has its own conditions. The element summoning type has a powerful power and a lower consumption of magical energy, but at the same time it is the most complex magic that the entire world of magicians recognizes. A magician needs to have a high learning ability to be able to learn this magic. Then the guy wondered if Mo Lung himself had studied the type of element summoning, and he looked away saying that he had studied quite a bit. At this time, Da Wai smiled and said that his teacher had been studying this type of magic for many years, and even after he officially became a one-star magician, he did not dare to tell others that he could successfully use an element summoning spell. This confused the magician, which made him cough in embarrassment, hinting to his friend to stop talking. Not understanding what the matter was, the guy awkwardly asked what the spell of summoning the element really meant so complicated. Seeing the mood, the disciple, Mo Long chuckled, asking where his motivation has gone. He doesn't really want to give up without even trying. 
The guy, stopping the teacher immediately said that he didn't mean it. Dao Wai smiled kindly and told the guy not to worry. His talent is very unique, with him he should learn this magic. Forced to smile, the guy thanked Dao Wai for his support, saying that he would not disappoint them and thought to himself that these two decided to let him learn the element summoning spell. Nodding, Mo Long dragged a mountain of books towards the guy and said that these are all magic books that have the basics, basic information and the theory of element summoning magic. Taking the textbooks, the guy with a pale face thanked the teacher. Giving a thumbs up, Mo Long smiled devilishly and said that he guarantees that the magic of summoning the element has many transformations and this is the most interesting magic spell, he will definitely like it. The guy, doubting this, still decided to thank the teacher again. Then, folding his hands behind his back, Mo Long looked at the student with a satisfied look and said, Now go to study. Then he added that if he had any problems, he and Da Wai would help him at any time. Smiling at Da Wai, he added that one should not rely too much on them, because they themselves do not know too much about this type of magic spell, so he should use his own peculiarity. The guy tilted his head not understanding what they were talking about and Mo Lung laughed out loud, said that of course it was self-study. Time passed, and Sean never stopped training morning exercises. Gradually, he performed a full range of morning exercises for beginners, which surprised Alice, who also trained with him. This allowed him to stop time even longer and now he has more time and energy to train mental strength and summon element spells. Of course, Alice helped him with all this, and now, a year later, he was thinking about the past year. While he was nostalgic for the bygone time, he was called to the teacher's office, who had grown tall and tall in a year, knocked on Mo Lung's door and Mo Lung agreed to let him in. Then, as usual, Mo Long got up from his seat and approached him and asked him to let him check the spiritual strength of the guy. Putting his hand on the guy's forehead, Mo Long nodded, saying that although the mental strength of the guy's spirit is still quite weak, but he has good progress. He increased the volume almost twice from what he had when he came to the tower. The guy enthusiastically thanked the teacher, but he said that there was no need to thank him. He became better thanks to his talent and hard training. Then Mo Lung asked the guy how he was doing with the element summoning spells and the guy said he was still studying. Stroking his beard, Mo Long said with a thoughtful look that in fact the magic of summoning the element is too complicated and confusing. The magic of summoning the element. According to the magic book, it originated in the ancient era. In that era, an alchemist who comprehended magic initially explored mechanics and other techniques. And while researching the structure of a living being, there he did not find the material he wanted and so he tried another way. He chose a magic element as the material. The alchemist used the powerful mental power of the spirit to compress the magic element. As a result, the material turned out, but due to the characteristics of the magic element, the element had to compress otherwise it would explode. But the most difficult thing in the magic of summoning an element was not the mental magic power, but the structure of this object, which is an element. It had been a year since he entered the magic tower, and the theory of the element summoning spell had been troubling him for a long time. Just memorizing the location is a tedious and painful process, which he learned easier thanks to pictures and hints from Alice, but the worst thing about this type of magic was compression. Even two low-rank magics, being mixed and compressed, were not inferior in strength to a high rank. But in order to fully memorize the stages and actions, realize and perfectly release it, you need to train and concentrate a lot. This is a very troublesome and difficult task that Sean has failed over and over again. We can say that normal people, basically, will not decide to study this magic and focus on mastering it. But, fortunately, Sean was not a normal person. He had Alice and he could take his time and simplify everything gradually. It's only thanks to Alice's support that he still has the motivation to study this type of magic. In the virtual space, when studying any kind of magic, the power of the mental spirit is not used. With this feature, the possession of magic does not represent anything special for the guy, no difficulties. He had already practiced the magic he knew countless times under Alice's guidance. This allows him to fully master this kind of magic. It is not realized, this year the guy mastered seven magic spells. They were all level one magic, but his current general mental spirit and skill would never allow him to do that. If the guy's teacher found out about this, the whole magical world would be shocked. Among the seven magics that he has comprehended, the strongest is the modified element summoning spell, the elemental bomb summoning spell, which he mastered for several months to make it work. While the guy was practicing in the room, Danny knocked on the door and he let him in. He apologized for the trouble, but the guy said that everything was fine and asked him what happened. 
He handed the guy a letter and said that he had received a letter. Taking it, he read that it was from Knight Scott opening it. He said that a year had passed and something must have happened. After reading it, he told Danny with a serious face that he should immediately give him a letter if it came from Knight Scott. Danny nodded, agreeing with the guy, and the guy frowned and said that he might have to leave the tower for a while. Then he asked if anything needed to be signed for this. Danny told him that he just had to inform the magician Mo Moon about it. Nodding, the guy said that he would go right away. Then Danny betrayed his badge and asked him to put it on. The guy, looking at the badge, asked what it was and Danny explained to him that it was a magic identification plate, something like a token of their tower. Nodding, he put it on his robe and went. Coming out of the tower with a backpack, he realized that he had eaten a year and he had never left this tower. Looking in the direction of Louis Castle, he pushed off from the ground with super speed and ran in that direction. Due to the fact that the guy was moving very fast, the adventurers who saw him wondered if he was a magician. But looking at his speed, he must be a high-level warrior, but he also had a magic cloak, which means he is definitely a magician. The guy was approaching the city with rapid jerks as he did not realize that he had already found himself near the city gates. Surprised by this, he stopped there and approached the gate. The townspeople, seeing him, immediately gave him up after seeing his mage badge. As he walked past the townspeople, they looked at him with admiration and exclaimed something like Mr. Magician or oh, Mr. Magician, come on in. Thus, the guy bypassed the queue and approached the city guards. The latter, seeing him, bowed and told the guy that they were leading a magician in Louis Castle for the sake of him. Awkwardly smiling at such an attitude and wondered if all magicians are so respected and then realization came to him. He was in too much of a hurry and therefore forgot the money. Seeing that the magician stopped, one of the knights asked if everything was alright, and then realizing why he stopped, the guard told him that he did not need to pay the city tax. Smiling sheepishly, he thanked the guards and went to the tavern. After a while, the guy reached the tavern and happily opened it and greeted Butler, who was standing behind the counter and wiping a glass. Seeing a familiar face, Butler looked at him cheerfully and said that it looked like their little magician had returned. Sean asked Butler about Scott and he said that he was here and decided to escort him to the knight's room. Opening the door to his room, he informed Tom that he had a guest. The cattle, who had dark bags under their eyes and looked pale, drank wine early in the morning. Sean's figure peeked out from behind his back, and Scott, blushing, was shocked at first, and then completely cried and ran to him and hugged him. Roaring in two streams, Scott did not believe that Sean really came and he did not understand what was going on here, said that he came as soon as he read the letter. Sean, looking at the knight's pitiful condition, apologized to him, and said that his letter had been coming to him for several days. Scott, without ceasing to shed tears happily said that the most important thing he came, the guy asked him what happened and how he could help, and Butler, realizing that there was nothing for him to do, buried the door. Then Scott pulled himself together and asked the guy whether he remembers that killer. Sean nodded and said that of course he remembered that incident, because it was the first attempt on his life. Scowling, Scott decided to get straight to the point and said that he had provoked a nobleman, Count Robin Lynn. Although a year ago, they resolved this issue, and he seems to have given up the magic spell. But according to Scott's assumptions, the Count should have known that the magician's apprentice was from his estate, so he did not dare to act. But last month, he started causing problems for Scott again. The guy asked how he did it and Scott said that Count Robin hired someone and started threatening Scott to give him a magic spell. Thoughtfully, the guy asked who he could hire and Scott grabbed his head and said that he had hired a magician's assistant. Turning pale, the guy asked which magician's assistant he was talking about. Scott said he didn't know who it was in the guy. Leaning on his arm, said that the Count must have hired a magician's assistant with the help of connections. Then he asked if the magician's assistant had graduated. Nodding, the man said that, as expected, the guy guessed right. He had heard that this man had been an assistant to Creighton, a two-star magician, for 20 years. Although his talent was so-so, and he had no hope of promotion, the magician Creighton allowed him to finish his training as an assistant. Gloomily, Sean said that even though he was a magician's assistant, he had been studying magic for 20 years. Then raising his head, the guy looked at the knight and asked what this Robin Lynn was going to do. Does he really want to use magic to kill Scott? The knight shook his head and clutching his forehead said that the Count did not dare to do something so presumptuous, so he came up with an insidious plan. He wants to force the magician's assistant, whom he brought, to arrange a magic duel against Sean. The guy stared blankly at the knight for a few seconds, and then the realization hit his brain and he jumped back in a panic, screaming. With his head down, Scott said that the Count wanted to use a magic duel to decide who owned the magic spell. 
At this time, Butler came in with drinks and shouted that it was already crossing all boundaries. Where has it been seen that a 20-year-old magician's assistant fought a duel with a 1-year-old magician's apprentice? It's just a mockery. Clenching his teeth, Scott said that he thought the best thing he could do was pass a magic spell. By keeping it close to him, he won't be able to protect it, so he just has to give it away. Looking at Scott with a serious face, Butler said that the magician Torini is like a god for their country. He should think carefully before doing it. If he spills the great magician Torini, Scott will have much more serious problems. Turning around, the cattle screamed, asking what to do then. He had nothing else to do, or that he should rely only on Sean. He can't imagine the guy's future. Sean, who heard all this, was gloomy and seeing this, Scott calmed him down and said that everything was fine. Sean just needs to show up there. He doesn't need to fight. Scott will tell Count Robin Lynn that he will surrender. But to Scott's surprise, Sean was not gloomy. He was excited and with a satisfied face. He told the knight that who said that he did not want to fight and would definitely lose. The two adults looked at him uncomprehendingly and seething with energy. Sean raised his hand and told the cattle to tell this count that he agrees to a magical duel. The next day they arrived at the appointed place and were greeted by the local servants, dressed as butlers and with round glasses. They reported that Count Robin Lynn was waiting for them inside and when the cattle and the guy entered they saw two people. A short man with brown hair combed back in noble clothes and a cloak, who smiled broadly and welcomed them into his house, and also a blonde man in an orange robe. Scott and Sean came in here and bowed, and while Scott was thanking the Count for the greeting, Sean was thinking that the Count who robs by force is not what Sean imagined him to be. The Count said that they could come at any time, and there was no need to hurry, and Scott politely retorted, saying that they were invited, how could they not show up? While the two were talking, the guy looked at the magician, feeling how he was glaring at him. This maid's mental spirit power was indeed stronger than him. While the magician wanted to show himself from the stormy side, the Count, smiling, destroyed the whole performance by pointing at him and introducing him to Sean, saying that this magician's name was Dylan. Dylan looked at the Count as an idiot, but said nothing, but Sean said he was pleased to meet him. Dylan, nodding slightly with a gloomy face, greeted Sean and said that he had graduated from Creighton's magic bath. Sean nodded and said that he had just entered the magic tower of the magician Mo Lung and became his disciple. The man, surprised that this child was a mage student, looked at him with a slightly shocked look. The Count asked what was the matter, and Dai Lin said that this young man had a higher status than him. Surprised, Sean asked why he felt that way and Dai Lin said that his position was simply higher than his. Then they started walking towards the arena and Sean asked if they could already start and Dai Lin nodded, and then told Sean that he had an offer for the guy. The guy asked what kind and he said that why wouldn't they arrange a peaceful magic duel. They went out to the training ground, where there were two wooden effigies. And seeing this, Sean smiled and said that he was only for a peaceful magic duel. On a sunny day, one veteran with 20 years of experience, who was an assistant to a magician's apprentice, and another young genius with the title of a magician's apprentice at the age of 11 decided to start a duel. Dai Lin, smiling cunningly, invited Sean to start, and he smiled with a fake smile in response nodded, thinking that this guy probably wants to find out the true strength of Sean how mean he is. Taking a deep breath, the guy began to prepare a spell. Although he possessed seven level one magics, but with his current magic power, he could only use three spells. Therefore, he decided to use the magic that he knows best, namely bullet magic. Concentrating the magic in front of his finger and turning it into a bullet, he shot them, and the head of the training scarecrow along with his chest completely disappeared. Clenching his fist, Scott smiled, saying that it looks like Sean has done a good job this year, because his bullet magic has become much stronger. But when he saw the Count with wavy black hair smiling calmly, the knight had a bad feeling. Looking at this destructive power, Dylan couldn't help but ask Sean if he really studied magic for only a year. The guy, smiling broadly, said that this was indeed the case, and then he bowed and gave way to Dylan, saying that he had finished and emphasizing the address magician Dylan. The latter, having taken a position, began to concentrate with a roar, waved his hand and uttered wind sword spells. The blue blade, woven from magical power, went to the scarecrow and cut his head and sword. This of course surprised Scott and he looked at this performance with shock, but the Count was still stroking his chin and smiling. Sean looked at Dai Lin and thought about the kind of magic he had just used, namely, about the magic of the second level, the wind sword. If only strength is taken into account, it is definitely stronger than his bullet magic. But his bullet magic is an instant magic attack, while his wind sword takes a few seconds to be released. 
If it was a magic duel, he would have easily defeated Dai Lin by shooting and dropping him in a second while he was still releasing magic. The guy was wondering what Dai Lin himself was thinking, and with a gloomy face, he said that he thought there was a draw in this round, whether Sean agreed with him. The guy, smiling broadly, agreed, and saying to himself that he had no doubt that he would not recognize reality. Dai Lin came forward and said that they could hold another round, but this time he would perform first. Sean nodded easily and let him go ahead. Then Dai Lin stepped forward, began to concentrate spiritual power in both hands, which took him more than a few tens of seconds. Seeing this guy turn pale, Scott clenched his teeth, and the Count smiled and finally after a while, Dai Lin opened his eyes and shouted a spell of flame magic and the dummy without a head caught fire and turned into dust. Scott, seeing this, could not restrain an exclamation of admiration seeing this. Grinning, Dai Lin looked at his opponent and said to Tom that it was his turn now. After finishing the spell, Dai Lin told Sean that it was his turn. He scratched his head with an awkward smile and said that, as expected, Mr. Dai Lin is very strong. And then holding out his hand, he said that now he would start, filling his hand with mana. He summoned acid magic, which fell from the sky directly on the remaining training dummy and began to eat it completely destroying it. And then thinking about it, he said that the effect of the spell was not as strong as he thought, and then turning to a colleague magician asked him what he thought. The latter, not hearing the guy, stared in shock at the spell that instantly appeared. He was already sweating with fear, saying that this is acid magic also long range, but with such force, isn't it fraud? Sean called the one again, which made him shudder and look at this monster-like boy. And then when he came to himself, he took control of himself and said with dignity, asked Sean why they would not consider this round a draw. Laughing, the guy thanked Dai Lin. Seeing this strength, Scott couldn't help but think that Sean was incredibly strong. And then he thought about whether the Count could defeat him. Although the smile disappeared from Grafo's face, but he still remained impassive, which made Scott unable to tell whether his opponent was happy or not. Dai Lin, looking at Sean, asked him if she could hold the third round. He smiled shyly and said that although it was sad, but his current mental magic power allows him to use only three magic spells. If the third round is a draw, he will have to use the magic core in order to restore mental magical power. Surprised by this statement, Dai Lin thanked him for his honesty and said that then they would arrange a final duel. Sean nodded and asked how they would determine the winner. Dai Lin, without answering anything, surrounded the collapsed scarecrow with a magic shield and looking at Sean, said that he had given the object a layer of magical protection. The guy can use the magic core to restore the magic power. And then he added that if he could destroy the magic shield within three magic spells, it would be considered a victory for Sean and a defeat for Dai Lin. Smiling, the guy proudly lifted up the pile and said that they had agreed. Surprised, Dai Lin asked him if he was going to think better first, and the guy refused, warming up before the attack. Grinning, he thought that it was time to use his last trump card, and then opening his palm, he began to collect spiritual power, holding this hand with the other hand for one thing, thereby helping himself to concentrate. Seeing such a large-scale gathering of magic power, Dai Lin was shocked, realized that Sean wanted to use several magic spells at once. Grinning, Sean said that this is exactly what his colleague is thinking. Sean even said with admiration that Dai Lin knows about using several magic spells together. Compressing two types of spell, fire color and blue color into a ball, he prepared to swing it like a ball right into the barrier, pronouncing the spell of summoning an elemental bomb. Dai Lin, Scott and even the impassive Count watched with shock as the ball flew and crashed into the magic shield created an explosion that raised a huge amount of dust into the sky. A huge explosion broke out, because of which the fervor rose throughout the arena and hid everything from sight. The Count suffered from so much fervor hiding his face with his palm and when the fervor subsided a little, he saw cattle ahead of him. It looks like the knight hid the Count himself and when the fervor subsided, he asked if the Count was okay. He was shocked, looking at this picture did not know what to say. Slowly, the fervor evaporated and a shocking sight opened up to the eyes of the two people. Right in the place where the training dummies were, there was a huge crater, and Sean was standing next to it, and Dai Lin was also sprawled on the ground. Smiling, Sean clenched his fist and said that the effect was not bad, but Dai Lin was scared to the core, saying that it was amazing. Seeing Dai Lin's condition, he walked up to him and held out his hand to him, asking him if he was okay. He first looked at Sean with shock, and then with admiration, and taking his hand, getting up, said that this could not be. And then he humbly shook Sean's hand and said that he had opened his eyes and he had won this duel. Nodding, Sean happily thanked Dai Lin. At this time, the Count clapped his hands and smilingly congratulated Sean on his victory, 
and then promised that he would no longer have any thoughts about their estate. And then, smiling, he turned to Scott and thanked him for protecting him. Scott, smiling stupidly, said that he just did what he had to. The Count, smiling broadly, said that having such a kind landlord and such a talented magician at their disposal, their citizens were definitely very lucky. Sean, raising his magic stone, sighed, saying that he was tired. Although actually with his current mental spirit strength, he can use another magic bomb, but he has to pretend that he can't do anything anymore. The Count, approaching the magicians, thanked them from the bottom of his heart, saying that they had shown him something amazing. Butler stared with his mouth wide open at the happy Scott and Sean, who were carrying a whole box of jewelry with the help of a cart. The two greeted him and when Butler came to himself, he immediately grabbed Sean by the shoulders and asked him if he was okay. The guy, not even knowing how to react to such abundant anxiety, said that he was fine. Laughing loudly, the knight pointed to the trophies and said that Sean had won them, and those things were gifts from the Count. Sighing, the guy, slightly pale, said that most likely the Count was asking for forgiveness in this way, and did not want to provoke such a strong magician like him with their help. Annoyed, Scott shoved the guy into the tavern while Butler looked around uneasily. Then Scott said he couldn't say such things here. Nodding to the boy, he closed his mouth. At this time, in the Count's training ground, he was standing next to a deep crater and Dialin was standing behind him. Looking at the crater with a serious face, the man asked Dialin what he thought about the power of this magician named Sean. He turned slightly pale and began to recall their duel and looking down said that the magician Sean has an excellent talent. If he trains hard for a few more years, he will most likely be able to officially become a magician. Then shaking his head and remembering that last magic, he added that this magician could become a master. Then Dialin looked at the Count with a serious face and said that it was better not to make such people his enemies. Scratching his chin, the Count thought about this young man, who, by the way, was having fun with Scott and Butler right now. This chapter is about magic. In the previous chapter, Sean had a magic crystal in his hand. A magic crystal is not just a pebble or a jewel, it is a crystal filled with magic. This crystal can store magic, which is the power of the mental spirit, and the power of the mental spirit itself is part of the soul. That is, with the help of this crystal, you can avoid death from exhaustion of the power of the mental spirit, which once happened to Sean. So where did this crystal come from? Monsters come in completely different types and each of them has its own characteristics. But there is one common feature among monsters, and this is the ability to adapt. Each of them has a unique ability that allows them to survive in the wild world of magical beasts. For example, there is a species of rodents that can partially shoot electric currents, but it perfectly helps magical beasts to survive and get food. Of course, there are also more powerful magical beasts like Wyvern, and their trump card is the Fiery Breath. Thanks to the Fiery Breath, they rule over weaker opponents even if there are several of them. In the distant past, people with magical talents began to learn the skills of monsters. For example, in the magical wild world of animals there is a blue-skinned turtle with the element of water. She had the skill to shoot a stream of water from her mouth. She also used this ability to get fruits and food from places he can't get. For example, he cannot climb a tree for apples, but by shooting a stream of water, he will shake off the tree, which is why several apples may fall and become his food for the day. People analyzed all the habits of monsters, what they do, what they use their skills for, how they use them, and thanks to the analyses, they gradually came up with magic. Of course, magic was multifaceted. In the past, of course, it was poorly developed and people did not even organize it. Of course, were the four fundamental elements, namely, fire, water, earth, and air. Magic began to manifest itself in its original form and form a society of magicians. Those who possessed this mysterious art called themselves magicians. Yes, in ancient times, magicians were respected by the people, because they worked miracles in the literal sense of the word. Of course, at first, magic was used in everyday life to help citizens. Thus, thanks to the help of a magician, people's lives became easier and they naturally began to respect people who can work miracles. The magicians didn't stay in one place. They traveled and explored the world in search of magical knowledge, but it all started with nature. There are many different magical phenomena. Even if the monsters had abilities, they were still living beings. Since they are living beings, they can be deadened. Studying the monsters after the murder, the magicians also learned that some monsters are quite edible and can be eaten. Moreover, some types of monsters possess life-giving meat, which was much healthier than ordinary meat and also tastier. The monster's fur and skin could be used to make a magic scroll, a magic robe, and magic clothes. But more importantly, there was a more important thing inside the body of any magical beast. 
and that thing was a magic crystal, namely a magic core. Through the research, the magicians learned that the magic core stores the energy that the monster has accumulated all its life and it could easily restore the metal power of the magician's spirit. Many magicians wondered what the mental power of the spirit is, whether the power of the soul of the spirit is different, but no one could prove from where it appeared. Perhaps this world naturally formed this energy. Gradually, the world of magicians expanded and at one point the magicians split up and formed another type, called a tamer. Gradually, the handlers, who tried very hard and sacrificed a lot, began to find monsters with a friendlier character and disposition than were able to tame them. Thus, some kind of magical beasts gradually became pets. Such animals, after they were raised by people, lost their innate wildness and became what a person needs. An example of such animals can be considered a crystal rabbit. Although the cultivation and breeding of monsters could not be compared with wild monsters, because the number of crystals produced is less, but it is much faster and it is used among magicians. Sean was one of those magicians. Because of his small mental strength of spirit, he always kept a couple of magic crystals, and the tower saw six pieces of magic stone for the guy every month. It took another year and a half after the magic duel during this period. Sean, as usual, trained hard, increasing the strength of his body and mental spirit. He mastered another magic, which was called an instant bomb shot. Although the activation effect is similar to the effect of a bomb spell, but this spell can be stored in a magic scroll. Compared to a magic spell, it's more like a magic fabrication. A magician can create a magic array and use various materials to store magic in advance in a magic scroll in case of an unforeseen situation. But Sean wanted to keep the magic spells of summoning the element in the scroll, and for this he needed not any material, but a magic crystal. By the way, Sean was just creating such a scroll right now. To do this, he used blanks of magical symbols, and then began to draw various other symbols denoting the magic that he wanted to use. When he was done with that, he added a magic crystal, but the spell circle did not react in any way, which is why Sean paled and took out several other magic cores. Then the circle burst into flames and lightning flashed, and then all the effects disappeared and the scroll was ready. Looking thoughtfully at the magic scroll, he said that although a magic scroll can instantly trigger a bomb, but it needs four magic crystals, and this is not profitable. Then a signal appeared in his head and someone said over his ear, he should go up to the ninth floor. Nodding, the guy said that he would go now. The room on the ninth floor was the room that magician Mo Long used to demonstrate important knowledge and teach students. It's been three months since Sean saw the teacher. Probably Mo Lung was planning to check the guy's progress. Climbing the stairs, Sean soon reached the right floor and then the right room. There he saw his teacher and magician Da Wai and greeted them. They also said hello and Mo Long asked the guy about how long it had been since he came to the magic tower. The guy smiled and said that two and a half years had passed. Scratching his beard in a thoughtful way, Mo Lung asked him how many magic spells he already knew and the guy, smiling, said that there were six of them, and thought to himself that an instant bomb should not be considered a magic spell. Da Wai, surprised, said that with his magic power, this is an incredible speed, but Mo Lung, pleased with either the progress of the student, or the surprise of a friend, asked quite which of his magic spells has the greatest power. The guy pretended to be deep in thought, said it must be an elemental bomb summoning spell. The surprised teacher looked at the student in shock. Surprised, he asked if there was such a spell at all. And while Mo Lung was wondering, Da Wai asked the guy in a rather calm tone where he learned such a spell from. Smiling, the guy smugly said that the spell of summoning an elemental bomb is in the book of magic summoning elements and he learned from there. Now it was Da Wai's turn to be surprised. He asked Sean in disbelief that he had learned the element summoning spell, and Sean nodded easily. Looking at his friend with a bit of disdain, the old man asked him if he didn't care about his students' progress and studies. Laughing loudly, Mo Long said that wasn't it better for him to study alone. When Da Wai asked him today, he remembered. Then, the pleased teacher, smiling, confirmed rather than ask Sean that he had learned this spell a year, and a half ago. The surprised guy asked the teacher from where he knows this and Mo Lung said that a year, and a half ago, the guy had a magic duel with a Creighton student. Confused, the guy thought about that. What does it mean that it is forbidden to conduct magic duels privately? Then he never reported it to the teacher, is that really why he is angry? Then, the guy said that he didn't specifically tell him. Mo Long smiled and said that from that moment on, Creighton was angry every time he saw him. Mo Long wondered at first what was wrong with him, and it was until yesterday that he drank too much magic essence and finally told him the truth. Smiling contentedly, the man said that Sean was good, never embarrass him. 
Sighing with relief that he had such a good-natured teacher, Sean thanked him for the praise. Dot Y cut into their conversation, smiling and holding something similar to plates in his hand, said that since they had confirmed Sean's abilities, they should proceed to the main topic. Smiling, Mo Long said that he almost forgot about it. The guy tilted his head asking about what kind of main topic is being discussed. Mo Long took the golden plates from Da Wai's hands and told the student that he was only two and a half years in the magic tower, but he already had such progress in training, he had incredible talent. And then, holding out the plates, the teacher continued, saying that these are four books of second level magic spells that Mo Long and Da Wai selected specifically for the guy, and he can learn them. The excited guy immediately asked about the level of books and the teacher, smiling, replied that they were of the second level. Mo Long handed the books to the student and told him that he could study them in his spare time. Taking the books, the guy thanked the teacher with a twinkle in his eyes. Then Mo Long told him that if he didn't have any questions, he could go, and Da Wai still smiled kindly and added that they were looking forward to the guy's progress. Thanking them, their boyfriend left the office. Sighing with regret, the guy began to descend, thinking that he still did not treat him as a real student. Two years have passed, and the magician Mo Long has not recommended him and has not allowed him to see other students. Maybe he treats him as an object for experiments, but it doesn't matter, he just needs to get stronger. At this time, Da Wai asked Mo Long if it was too early to hand over the second level magic books to the guy, and he shook his head and said that if it's Sean, then it's worth a try. Maybe he can understand them. Smiling, Da Wai told his friend that he seemed to have high hopes for Sean. Mo Long nodded with a serious face, saying that Sean is the most talented student he has seen, although he has a weak foundation. But the growth of mental strength of spirit is even faster than the average students and it is really shocking. Da Wai, with interest, asked the man if he had still found the reason, because it had been more than two years. Shaking his head, Mo Long put the book on the table and said that he had been watching him for a very long time, but could not find any reason. Recalling the student's action, he said that he usually just does strange exercises and then sleeps, and he doesn't have so much time to spy on his student. Looking at the back of his friend Da Wai, he said that many people have high potential. Even a legendary saint rank magician is not a fact that he could find the reason. Sean may have a weak foundation, but maybe he has a talent that they can't see. Mo Long turned around and nodded, saying that was why he wanted to see if the guy with his current spirit power could comprehend a second level magic spell. Da Wai thought about it and said that with the current mental strength of the spirit, Sean would be able to use no more than two second level magic spells. Will he be able to comprehend such a level? In addition, these are four magic spells of different attributes. Looking out the window, Mo Long said that he didn't know if he could or not, but the fact is that he was already able to master a first-level magic spell when he could only use it once a day, and yet, he could even release it instantly. So maybe he will be able to repeat his feat with a second-level spell. Approaching a friend, Da Wai told him to be careful, because the higher the expectations, the more disappointment he will experience as a result of failure. Saying that everything was fine, Mo Lung added that he was just using it as an experiment. But if he suddenly succeeds, then Mo Lung will teach everything he knows. Smiling contentedly, Mo Lung said that his talent could at best lead him to a three-star magician. But if Sean can do it, then he has unlimited potential and a future. If a magician could raise a strong magician, then there would not be a single regret in his life. At this time, the guy reached his room and sat down on the bed, decided to first use the mental power of the spirit to study the magical signs of the book. When he was done with this, he memorized all these magic books and entered the virtual space. As soon as he went there, Alice met him, immediately realizing that the guy had received a new magic book. Nodding, the guy handed her the book and said that this time it was a second-level magic book. With excitement, the girl grabbed the book and began to conduct tests. After a short while, she opened her eyes and said that, as expected from a second-level magic spell book. The guy asked the girl what happened and told him to wait a little while while he checked the path of magical energy. And then she brought out a holography of a huge circle, in the center of which another huge circle passed vertically. Horrified at this, the guy asked what it was, and Alice kindly informed him that it was a card for the magical study of a second-level spell. In shock, looking at this complex magical construction, a guy with a pale face asked the girl what kind of magic spell it was. The girl with a serious face, looking at the spell, was silent for a few seconds, and then said that she did not know. Surprised by this answer, the guy in shock asked her that even she could not analyze and find out what kind of magic it was, and the girl, thinking, bowed her head and said that it looked like a wind attribute spell, but she did not know what effect it had. 
she suggested to the guy that after he understands this magic, he should return to the real world and experiment with it. Sighing, the guy nodded, and the girl said that to mark the starting point of the path, and he should remember the path itself. Then turning away and leaving, Alice finally said that she would look forward to Sean's result. A few days passed and in the morning of that day the guy went to the dining room to have breakfast. Then he met Danny, who greeted him, invited him to sit at the table and pointed to the food. The guy thanked Danny for helping him constantly. Danny, smiling, said that as an experienced magician's assistant, this is what he should do. Then Danny looked a little surprised at how fast and clumsy Sean was and told him that he shouldn't be in such a hurry. Smiling, the guy said that he just couldn't wait to learn new magic. Swallowing everything at once, the guy ran to his room, telling Danny that he was finished and asked him to clean up after him. Smiling, Danny nodded and when Sean left, he noticed how the other assistants were staring at him. Three of the magician's assistants came up. To Danny, in front was a rustic-looking guy with short burgundy hair. On the left was a fat man with black hair and on the right was a long-nosed blonde. The guy with maroon hair grinned down at Danny and said that he had heard that the magician Mo Moon scolded Sean. The long-nosed blonde immediately added that he had not seen Sean with other students of the magician Mo Moon and the fat man immediately grinned and said that the guy was most likely taken here only from for connections. And then they laughed out loud together, slamming a plate on the table, which scared the three. Danny frowned at them and told them that it was none of their business and it would be better for them to stop prying. Recoiling in fear, they immediately turned around and began to slander, saying that well, he got here because of his connections, so why behave so arrogantly? The guy with the burgundy hair immediately said that it didn't matter anyway, it was better for them to leave, otherwise Danny knows second level magic spells and is stronger than them. Sighing, Danny stood up and removed the plates and asked with interest if Sean was studying hard. On the night of that day, Danny was walking down the corridor and saw the half-open door of the training room and seeing that the light was on there, he looked with interest through the crack, thinking what was training at that time. He realized with shock that Sean was there, and he trains late at night. Closing his eyes, the guy began to concentrate spiritual power and opening it released a wind blade that crashed into a magic target. Sighing, the guy began to breathe deeply, and Danny, who was watching this, realized in shock that Sean had already learned the wind blade spell, which is of the second level. Surprised by this, Danny could not resist and went into the room and Sean, seeing him, greeted him with joy. Danny, looking at him a little awkwardly, said that he did not expect that Sean had already mastered the magic of the second level wind blade. Looking at his hands, Sean nodded happily, saying that now he also knows the name of the spell. This shocked Sean even more and he asked the guy in bewilderment that he didn't even know what spell he was using. Scratching his head, the guy awkwardly said that actually he had just learned this spell and had not fully understood it yet. Danny could only smile awkwardly. The next day, Danny went to Mo Moon and told Tom that he had brought tea. The latter allowed him to enter and raising his head Mo Long saw the bags under Danny's eyes and asked what happened that he didn't get enough sleep. The guy said that he just saw Sean practicing the wind blade last night and thought that it had been 10 years since he entered the tower and he had mastered only two magic spells and he felt ashamed. Mo Long smiled and said something, saying that although Danny's talent is at the usual level, but he is very hardworking and spends most of his time studying magic spells. Then, with a smile, the magician added that 10 years had passed and Danny had already mastered two second level magic spells and this was impressive. Then, taking a cup of tea, Mo Long added so that he would not worry and fully master these two magic spells. Next year he would teach him another second level magic spell. Delighted with this news, Danny thanked the teacher and said that he would not interfere with the teacher and would leave, but the magician stopped him. Interlocking his fingers, he asked him what he had seen Sean practice using the wind blade. Danny nodded and said that judging by the way he releases it, he seems to have studied it at a sufficiently high level. Crossing his arms and leaning on the back of a chair, the magician told Danny that he could go. Looking at the ceiling with admiration, the magician smiled and said that it had only been a week since he handed the magic book to the guy and he had already mastered the wind blade. It was amazing. I'll nod, the magician said that Sean is a real genius. At this time, Sean entered the office and asked if his name was in Mo Lung immediately erased his smile, made a gloomy look and looked at the guy and asked if he had already mastered the blade of the wind. Sean, at a loss to see why the teacher was so gloomy, said that not yet. The man, squinting, looked even more viciously at the guy and said that yesterday in the training room he released the blade of the wind and then added that the guy thinks his teacher doesn't know anything. 
Not knowing what to say, the guy thought for a second and immediately found an excuse in clutching his heart like a true honest man. He said that although he had released it earlier, but it was probably an accident, how could he believe that he really possessed it? Then the magician, squinting, asked what Sean considered sufficient mastery, and the guy, grinning maliciously, instantly released the blade of the wind, followed by the magic of the bullet. Before the spells reached the magician, they crashed in front of his desk and there was a small explosion. The man, looking at it admiringly, said that it was great, and the guy, removing the aimed finger, said that this is what it means to fully master the spell. 